Hello, Hello. Hello. <laughs> We are Girls Gets Glory and we are back and ready in action. Uh, the second episode of the season, which is pretty exciting. Um, we happen to have some news. We've got a giveaway, exclamation mark raffle. Who knows when we'll pull it, but it's for the Dungeon Masters Guide. Ooh. That's me, Chad. So win it. You've got to be present. You, you must be in chat to win it. It is international, so it doesn't matter where you are or, or where you're from. We will ship it to you. How do they do we'll that? Ship it. Um, it's the magic of D&D. <laughs> Magically through oh. teleportation. No, how do they enter the oh. raffle? Oh, <laughs> exclamation mark raffle. We're on the Into same page. the chat. Into you write that. Switch Very chat. Good. And then exactly. when the raffle's drawn, you have to be there. And then also, uh, then just ping uh, the D&D mods, and I think they'll take care of it. Get all your shipping information from there. Also, look who's back. Hey! Yay! Welcome back, everyone. And also Kim. And me. <laughs> she was in France traveling around. Very exciting, but now we're excited to have her back. And maybe Fauna was in the equivalent of France, too. We will find out. So let's pick up this story from there. Quickly, let's, yeah. Next week, we're playing at 6 p.m. So spread the word. 6 p.m. Oh, yeah. Pacific Standard Time. So three hours later than normal. We'll announce it again later. Just make sure everyone tunes in then yes. because of TwitchCon. So, so much yeah. TwitchCon action. So stay on TwitchCon, and then after your TwitchCon fun, tune in to not TwitchCon, which is us. Um, that was a <laughs> long-winded saying of saying, hey, we love you guys. We still are excited to play next week, even though we're later. Um, okay, so I want to pick it up right from there. So just to get you guys quickly on the same page, um, you had done some exploratory journey in water for the last six months that you have been recovering here in uh, different capacities, dealing with the blow of Alindra. And this had led to Lala following a very shiny object, she's not sure what, into a very mysterious mannered home. Um, from there, uh, she just continued to track inward. Moira had lost her on the surface of her pinging that she had tried to track down Lala with with the locate object. Um, but Lala then suddenly got warped from this black marbled a vacant almost manor home into a dark underground cave of some sort where she continued to follow this cloaked figure who had this shiny object. So that being said, it picked up with everybody else following and her getting into a little bit of trouble. So we're just going to start from there right away. I just like to say that I'm not taking any damage. <laughs> you have not. So I'm fine. <laughs> you are yeah. flying pretty far away. This creature that you have been hitting who you cast Hunter's Mark on isn't necessarily in the best shape, but this other fellow creature that is next to it has also been retreating. So we want to pick it up from there. Um, we can just start, let's just start top of the action, just as if we're just kicking it off. So Lilith, we're going to start with you. Do I roll initiative? What am I doing? I already have the initiative order. Essentially, oh. I am I know that you guys are running. You guys are just running as quickly as you can. You probably have right. to use another full action and move okay. to get into eye line of whatever noise you hear in the deep, dark cavern. I'm gonna go ahead and run another 30 feet. Sounds my good. first action. And at this point, am I about 30 feet away? 40 no, feet away? you are actually a little bit closer to about 100. Feet? You're right around the mark because it was about 250 feet away. You ran 100 and, oh. uh, yeah, you ran 60 feet. You're trying to get feet. to 120. If you run 30 more feet, you're about 120 feet away at least or so from the sound that you're hearing. Okay, I'm gonna run again. Okay, you run, you run, but you have dark vision if I'm not mistaken. Yes. So right on the cusp of your vision, suddenly in the darkness, <laughs> And it's been a difficult uh, cave to run through. You guys are uh, jumping through a lot of these very large um, internal kind of natural cavernous uh, stalagmites and stalactites. You guys are, you, you feel like this has been here for a long time. This is clearly shapen but used. The trails are wet and slick, but clearly have some sort of prints on them that have covered up former tracks. So you're just like jumping around and trying to run forward. You're not even really pay, paying too much attention. However, you see Lala, tiny little Lala in the far distance, ever so slightly, up hiding behind one of these slag uh, tights, right? It's tight. Slag tight. Holds yes. on tight. Holds on tight. Oh, and the I mites know. come in from the ground. Um, so she's hiding right up behind one of these slag tights. And she's just like, has her bow out and she's like hitting something. You can see it kind of pinging against this like dark cloaked figure. You have no idea what this figure is, but you can see the faint outline of it. So that's what you catch. Okay. Lala, it's your turn. Um, so I'm up, right? Mm -hmm. And it's how far away is it from me? Would you say? Uh, you had flown 35 feet up, so I would say because of the height of the creature, it's about you're about 30 feet away. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to try and cast sleep on it. Okay. So um, you roll, I think it's a 5d8 or 8d5. No, there's no d5s. It's 5d8 then. It depends uh, on what level you're casting it though. Ooh, uh, it is, yeah, it's 5d8, um, but I'm casting it at second level. Ooh. All right, so if you want to roll those dice and see if this creature is able to get knocked out. That'd be a oh, powerful spell. I have. <laughs> Never mind. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Twenty-three total. Is that what it is? Okay, so you cast yeah. sleep. You quickly... You know, put down your bow and just try to get this spell just out. Shake all my pixie yes, dust. Yes, shake on all it. your pixie dust on it. It definitely sneezes. It makes a very odd sound. Unfortunately, though, it seems like the, the sleep spell did not affect this creature as you had been trying to cast it upon it. So, slide this little thing. Dang it. It's kind of what you hear from the underneath this like mask and this cloaked figure. Uh, and that is going to be your action. Do you have a bonus action or move that you wish to do? Uh, I'm going to recast Hunter's Mark on it. Okay, so you focus it one more time. Just try to get your eyes on the creature and make it a little bit more weaker uh, and also track it, which is great. All right, so moving along, uh, Junishka. Oh, goodness. <laughs> it's my turn. Yes. What am I? I'm, by, I'm close to... Very close to Lilith. And you just saw her bolt forward. I want to go as well. My speed is 40 feet. Okay, sounds good. So you want to use your full action and your move just to try to, and if you remember the last time you ran in the wrong direction accidentally because you're still shaking off that. I'm a little drunk. A little <laughs> drunk. Um, so you use, you turn back around and you use your full action, full movement sure. to try to get behind Lilith. Sure. Can I have you roll a dexterity, um, oh, a dexterity check I'm going to have it be because it is a very slick wet ground. Bless you, Rowan. That's Bless you, Rowan. <laughs> I was almost the 20, but it does not. It was three. Oh, a three? Yeah. Okay, so what happens is this. Junishka, you turn around, sure. now seeing the direction Lilith is going in, and you just start to run. And you completely miss how wet the floor is. Your <sighs> butt goes, yeah. like, you just slip on the ground, and you start to slide in the yeah. opposite yeah. direction yeah. of where Lilith is going. Can I have you make a deck sa uh, saving throw? Oh, my saving throw is, oh, that's only one rage, right? So it doesn't, like a guy. <laughs> Should we count that? It's a swear. <laughs> Dex. Saving throw. So this is the yes, thank yous. And it's still same. 13. 13? Ooh. Okay. That's better than um, three. So you slide <laughs> and you just see Janishka. Yeah, she's going a solid 40 feet, like like sliding feet as well. Like she's almost, uh, do you want to do tummy flop or do you want to do a back flop? Like, I, what are you I doing? pictured myself on my butt. On your butt, so you're yeah. sliding down almost a, Whee! Yeah. <laughs> like in the snow, a kid, and you just start to slide down the slide, and you just land into some sort of black sludge. Um, it takes a moment as you're in it, but it's very sticky, and it seems to be some uh -huh. sort of naturally occurring goo, right. as you are currently uh, at a movement of zero and stuck in some sort of sludge. Stuck oh. in sludge. So, yes. And you are sinking into it. Uh, you are about three feet right now, but your legs have stopped, and you're like on this slippery, almost tunnely slide, and you just are trying to hold from it. Also, above you are just tons of stalactites, and they're dripping this like black goo from it. It feels like my heart stuck in sludge. Oh, dear. You know what oh. I mean? Lilith, My yes. Is, is the sludge that she's stuck in, is it a plant? Is it like alive? Oh. It's hard to tell from here because you ran forward and then you just hear her behind you like, wee, as you look to your left <laughs> and you see her slip into the direct right. left of you into something. Um, from what you can tell right now, you would have to turn around and probably use your next full action to understand what's happening because it's very dark and it's very hard to see because right now even with dark vision, and no light source, uh, even though I think Moira, you lit Requiter. Yeah. So you can kind of see there's some sort of black abyss, but you don't know more than that. You'd have to get closer. You're 40 oh feet away from God. it right now. All right. Okay. I'll just Help stay us. here. I'll be here. Don't worry about me. And oh. then we go. All right, you just start to let it take over you. Well, if, I, um, if I'm still, you don't sink as much with quick sex. So, you know, maybe if I just use it as like a jacuzzi, <laughs> a like an, a bubbly jacuzzi, like, like a mud bath. sludgy jacuzzi, yeah. mud bath, spa day. 
Yeah, there is definitely, I'll say, there's definitely a bubble or two. It's warm. Dragon Spa Day. If someone wants to draw this. <laughs> dragon Spa Day. Hashtag Dragon Spa Day. <laughs> dragon Spa Day. Um, <laughs> but Moira, it is now your turn. As Janishka just had that happen, and you just saw her slip and slide to the left of you 40 feet. Uh, okay, I'm going to go after her. All right, so you take your fighter. You go, I need you to make a dex check, because it's very slippery around this oh, area. No. Do we still have our... Pass without trace plus ten dex. Um, th- uh, that's only for stealth checks. It is. Yes. Never mind. I'll try to help myself because my dex isn't great. This is twelve. Twelve? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're like you're kind of sliding and slipping, and your legs like open. It's like a black ice kind of situation where you're you're having trouble here. Can I have you make a dexterity saving throw? Oh yeah. Are you sure. <laughs> behind, 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 behind. Five. Okay. Uh... Oh my God. <laughs> you yourself, is it a front flip or is it a back one on this one? Probably the back. The back? Yeah. So you yourself, woo, your feet go out underneath you. You begin to slide down the same exact slippery path of Dranishka. You hit behind her, knocking her two more feet into oh. it. But you're not in the black sledge. She's just now waist high in it versus knee high or thigh oh, high. Hello. If, if, oh, hello, darling. Um, if I put the fire on it, does it do anything? Okay, so right away, you're just like, oh, gosh, and you're just trying to get this sludge, you know, Dranishka out of the sludge. There's no places to hold on to here. It's very slippery all around this pit. Um, you take Requiter, you put it nearby the fire. It seems to almost lick it too nicely, almost like okay. it wants the fire. Nope, putting that away. Okay, so you take a moment, and you just slowly lift it away, realizing that maybe this is not the best thing to put fire into. Can I try and Pour out. Yeah, sounds yeah. good. Do you keep required or lit? Yes. Okay. I keep it lit because I gotta see. But mm-hmm. all right, I'm Can gonna I say it? make a quick oh, just make a quick strength check to try to pull her out even a little bit after this fumble. And I'm very strong. Yeah. I think. Oh, that's almost a seven. <laughs> Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're able Wait, to get have... you're able to get your hand that's underneath um, Trinisha's arms stuff. and start to lift her up about a foot. Um, right now, you kind of know Moy- where Moyer's behind you, but you just—it feels like she's hugging you. And she's I love to you too, it. darling. Oh God, she's so bright. Okay. Good friends. I'm, I'm well, gonna keep trying to call her out. Now. All right. So as you guys are in that situation, often not too far in the distance, um, Lala, just on the cusp of your vision, you are now catching that that sludgy black goo, whatever that is, seems to use all of its movement and its action. And you see, kind of on the cusp of your vision here, there's no door. This cave kind of ends, it seems like, or at least it apparently has an end, at least visually where you're seeing now. But there is a crack within this, and you see it slide into the crack, no more than an inch, maybe two inches. So it's just like... So this whole thing is just pushing itself through this crack in the back of the cave. Um, And that seems to be its turn. Uh, Rowan your turn how far away am i from dronishka uh you are i believe still about 40 feet you're 40 feet away from the left side she like slid down 40 feet or something okay um yes uh i can't get close um you can you can move before you pass it i know but i'm only my speed's only 25 so little legs I, I, ooh. How far away am I from, like, Lala? I, um, can I see them? Because so at Lala, the end of the last game, you had run exactly run. where Lilith is. So right now, Lilith is about 60 more feet ahead of, from you. Okay. Um, from what you can gauge, you can't see Lala. You don't really know what's going on. But Lilith seems to have spotted something in some sort of way from just her stopping and uh, okay. from her body movement. So you think that you might be about 120 feet away from Lala. Okay. Um, all right, but I'm going to run towards Pranishka and Moira. Okay, so you turn <laughs> left and you begin to run. Can I make a dex check then? Okay. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, no. Yeah. Everyone so, get away five. from me. A five? Right. Yeah. <laughs> you, you turn, you don't realize how slippery the ground is. And then just on that one little spot that some of you guys were running in, it wasn't so bad, but there are really wet spots here. You slip on this kind of tunnely canal and you start to zip down of it, down this like little tiny pocket for a gnome. Um, can I have you make a dex check, please? Can I try and grab her as she's coming down? We'll see what happens. Okay. A dex check? Yes, a dex check. 
Oh, sorry, saving throw. Saving, 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 saving throw? Saving throw? Yes. Okay. Fifteen. Okay, great. So as you're starting to slip and slide down, you're able to kind of like, like almost uh, use your full body length. Like you just like spread like a flying squirrel. Ah, <gasps> you you Mr. kind of Hopkins. Yeah, you put your legs and your arms out like a flying squirrel. Click click flying squirrel. <laughs> and you start to like hit against like the the divots, but you stop just short. I would say just ten feet short of Moira. So you stop ten feet above Moira. Hello, welcome to the party. It's a sludgy TPK down here. I have something very useful for us. If I can just get a little bit closer on my next turn, well, just 10 feet away. Surprisingly, uh, because of that mishap, you technically had used your movement on that, so you still have your action. Oh, so can I, can I, can I, um, all right, since I'm in flying, like, like, row and flying scroll mode, I, this is what I would like to do, and DM, limit me where you must. <laughs> this is what I would like to do. I would like to cast Freedom of Movement and pounce on the both of them at the same time. Oh. To give them both Freedom of Movement from the Sludge. Okay. I'm going to say that because it was technically <laughs> the save in the movement, and you still have your 25 feet, and you're only 10 feet away... Uh -huh. Um, you cast freedom of movement. You you jump. I want you to make a quick dex check to see if you can land on them a appropriately. Dex check or save? Uh, just a check because okay. you're trying. You're actively trying to do this in your head. On your okay. Nine. Nine. Okay. So you kind. Wait. Oh yeah. Nine. A nine. Okay. So you kind of like overshoot it, but you're able to touch them as you cast freedom of movement and you land with your full back in the sludge um, as you're starting <laughs> no. to sink into it. Did you also cast freedom of movement on yourself or just well, on I the two of them? Coming from me. Okay, so, it depends on how many people you can cast it on, what your intent was. It's just touch. It says touch a willing creature. So she's touching herself. And are you, are you casting at a higher level, though? It is it is a fourth I level, and that's that. as high as I can cast. Okay, I think that Freedom of Movement might only be able to cast on one person. Just double check that spell. It uh, You touch a willing creature. Range, touch. For I'm the duration, the target's movement is unaffected by the difficult terrain and spells okay. and magical effect. Blah, 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 blah. I'll, I'll say that it affects Trinishka. Like, you hit okay. you hit her, you cast it, and suddenly okay. you feel like you, you can dance Ooh, a little bit. Now yeah. it actually feels like a jacuzzi, because yeah, you're actually you moving in it. You can pull me up now. Now, you, are la you landed full flying squirrel back, like you overshot Trinishka, tapped her in the head, and then fell in the, the sludge. And right now you're, like, sinking um, without the wingspan of a flying squirrel. Um, and you're about an inch into this sludge as you're starting to go. It's not the idea of a mud bath. Where is Mr. Hopkins? <laughs> oh, he's tucked away safe. Yes, he crawls. He like crawls up on top of her, and he's yeah. sitting on her, like doing like um, like like a the like like airplane. Yeah, like, yeah, like help oh, Rowan, so please, <laughs> like help her. Um, so, as that is happening, this creature uh, that you have been actively engaged with seems to uh, take its cloak, pull it closer, and turn around and try to run. Ooh. Uh, do I get any sort of like? No, but because you're not within melee of it right now, you didn't already. It. So, so it turns around and begins to bolt. Now it's well, it's. Then I'm gonna follow it. All right. Well, it's moving pretty fast, and it seems to be like jumping around almost. Yeah, but but like naturally, how fast? <laughs> Let me see how it's doing. Oh, okay. Well, I had it make a dex check. So as it's trying to jump. Um, and try to Slide. understand all these things. It also like slides, Good. and then you hear it, a crack against its leg, against one of the oh. uh, stalagmites, and you can see that it's starting to hobble oh, away. No. So this thing, but, but <laughs> feel bad. can I have you roll a quick perception check to see if you can kind of see a little bit more of what's happening? Uh, ooh, that's not the babe. Uh, 21. 21, okay. So as you're trying to understand exactly what this creature is, you see its leg poke out from underneath its cape and it's wearing boots but the boots are too big for its body and you're able to catch ever so quickly a glimpse of its leg and this leg though you can't see the color of it it seems discolored and it seems to have warts on it or boils or or some sort of sharpened edge on it it is a creature by all means and the yellow eyes that you saw earlier when you were following it and looked into it, the, the mask of it, suddenly you're starting to gauge or feel like this is not anything of any of the races you've seen in Waterdeep right now. Mm. So, um, Well, since it's slowed down, I'm going to try to catch up to it. 
Okay, so that's what we're going to do on your action. Real quick, we go back to the top with Lilith. What would you like to do? I am going to not yell down the hall because I don't want to attract anything to me. So I guess I just continue to run towards Lala. Sounds good. You use your full action. Uh, thankfully, because of the way that all of this has been kind of set out before you, you don't have too much trouble on this main bridge. You kind of run down it, you stop, you jump to the next bridge, and you run down, and you see Lala above you. She's still um, 35 feet in the air, mm-hmm. and you use your full movement and your full action to get within, like, I think about 60 feet. You're 30 feet per, uh, per action, right, mm-hmm. for your speed? So yeah, you're 60 feet away from Lala right now, and you can see her much clearer, and you're trying to look, but she's she's got her bow pointed out, and she's like kind of looking around somewhere very curiously. Do you want to say anything to her now that you see her, or are you, you good to I'm go? going to stage whisper. Okay. Lala! You can hear it through the cave. You actually heard some people scream, you think, <laughs> in the distance, like a wee or a woo. It's hard to tell. Uh, do I can hear you it? hear me? It, you can you hear me, can you? Lilith? Yes, it's me. What? How, you found me. Yes. Oh, good. You, Do you see the thing over there? Do I see the thing? Let's have you make a perception check. Let's see if you can do this on your bonus action. Gauge where this creature might be. Mm, 19. Okay. You don't understand what she's looking at. You don't see anything in front of her. But you look down and you swear you hear through the... the, the uh, the echoes of the cave right now where there is quite a little bit of noise happening. You swear you hear like a whimper and you look in the direction of the whimper and you see like what looks like somebody or something wearing a black cloak and kind of hobbling in the distance, about 80 feet away, maybe 100. That cloak and thing. Yeah. Are you trying to kill it? No, kind no. No. Maybe, Maybe. no, I don't know yet. Okay. So (laughs) as this happening, you yes. hear something in your head. What languages do you speak? I speak uh, common, elvish, troll, sylvan, and draconic. Okay. You hear a voice press into your head. It's speaking in elvish. You hear, don't hurt me, please. Please don't hurt me. And then I'll just shout in elvish, I won't if I can have whatever's on your back. Do you shout it out loud or do you say it in your head? Oh, I guess I'll say it in my head. I don't know if I can... If it can read my thoughts. It's a weird yes. sensation. It's like like you you hear the voice, but you... Lilith, you just see Lala kind of like shake for a second as if she's hearing something. Um, and that's all you catch. Uh, but it is technically now your turn as well because Lilith has just finished up that action. Uh, so. Well, if it doesn't respond, I'm going to keep flying towards it. Okay. And then I'm going to shout. I, re- I, d- I Sorry I shot at you. I was just really startled. And I just want what you have. All right. Make a persuasion check. And I'm going to give you advantage because you you scared the this thing. Okay. Uh, what do they have? Something 18. Tiny. 18. Okay. This cloak, cloaked creature turns. And again, it's still wearing that mask. But you can still see those yellow eyes with those black irises, a little black irises, and it turns to you and it goes, Holly, I won't be in trouble, but if it's going to make you leave. And he just hands, he throws it, and then he turns around and he just hop, continues to hobble away. You don't know what direction he's going in, but he just mm-hmm. wants you away from him right now. I th- th- thank you. <laughs> Janishka, okay. what do you want to do? Well, I've been touched by an angel. Or flying scroll woman, either way. And I can now move, yes? Freedom of movement. Freedom of movement. So, um, how likely... For up to an hour, by the way. For up to an hour. So I get out of that. Yeah, cozy. surprisingly, like, it was, this was a very difficult situation. Whatever this pool was in, it was, you were stuck, your movement was zero. And right now you can, like... Like, it's like water. It's almost like, it's like perfect water. Like, you could bathe in this stuff. You don't know, it doesn't smell great. Do you want to make a quick um, nature check on your bonus action to see if you can gauge what this stuff is? Oh, no. (laughs) Two. Two? Um, I don't like you. Something (laughs) something sticky and gooey and ooey is about the amount amount that you can gauge from this. Uh, But you do know that your friend 
is currently in it, and uh, you don't see her moving much except for sinking oh, right, into it. Right. She is right in front of you. Okay, I have... I'm the only first level well, spell slot. I'm, I'm so, only okay, so I... Do I need... I don't even... I'm strong, so I don't... You can just make a general big. strength check. So, okay, yeah. let's do that. We want to use this one? Or di- or where, who makes these dice? Go. Come on, go. Don't fuck us, Gil. Gil! <laughs> <laughs> no, Gil. Was this just a general strength check? That's right. That yeah. was five. Five? Um, so as you get closer to Rowan, the issue here but is that... so strong. You're so strong. Uh, you should be. But the issue is, is that, like, trying to pick her up in this situation, she herself is quite sticky to it, even yes. if your movement is zero. Yes. You yourself can't really find the strength to lift her up. Slippery. It's slippery. It's, no. it's you know, it's slippery yeah. wet. So I, I think it would take, unfortunately, another round of action. But you are currently, you have your hands underneath her and you're trying to lift Let's her Let's try again. Okay. I think that we were, unfortunately, going to have to keep going through that action. Because um, <laughs> you used your full action to try to lift her up. So what do you say as you can't lift her up this action? Oh, well, I, this never happens to me. I hear that a lot, but but now I'm saying it. Get it? I this, this never happens to me. I, I there we go. Thank you. I oh, it's just so floppy. My arms, <laughs> my arms floppy. Um, so as she's apologizing for not being able to get you up, uh-huh. um, she. <laughs> Um, well, stated. Um, let's continue. Moira, it's okay. your turn. And you also have a choir. Yeah. Still lit. I do, for better or for worse. How far away is the, the creature that's hobbling away? Oh, you don't even know what's happening. That's about uh, 180 to 120 feet away from here. Yorkshire, very, very so far. Divine senses. He's dead. Um, They're on, essentially on the other side of the cavern. You can hear faint echoes I just of heard. something. Yep. I just heard that for sure. I also did shout at it. <laughs> you did. It's true. In Elvish. Did I hear her shouting at all in Elvish? It's hard to hear with the echoes. A lot's happening within these. It's almost like when some when one person talks, unless you're within a certain distance, it sounds like a bunch of echoes vibrating against one another. I'm just going to keep trying to pull my friends out because you said I'm not quite in the... No, no, no. Okay. You were able to stop just right five feet before because yeah. Trinishka was right in front Okay. Of you. But now she's five more feet in. She's yeah. about five feet away from you, and Rowan is an extra, so Rowan's about ten feet away. Do I have rope? Uh, you do. I'm yes. going to lasso some rope and try and pull her out, and I'm going to just... Um, Sounds good. No, it takes a full action to tie a knot. Yeah. Do you want to just throw the rope in? That won't take a full action. Yeah. Right. Um, but before I do that, because I don't trust this thing with requiter, it looks like it wants the fire. I'm going to really focus on where she is so I can like sense and be able to throw it to her okay. and then put requiter out. Alright, sounds good. So uh, just make a quick dex check as you try to throw it at Rowan and, and the general direction. Sorry if I hit you in the face with the rope. I it's don't okay. need to. Can't get much worse. 11. 11, okay. Yeah, it kind of flops next to you. You're probably going to have to grab onto it because you can. That's all it took. It's kind of on Rowan. She okay. grabs it as quickly as she can. Alright. That is your full action to do that. Do you have it? And you put put it out with your bonus action yeah. required. Sounds good. All right. So, Rowan, what do you want to do? You want to try to get yourself out of this? Mm-hmm. Make a strength check. <laughs> Ugh, three. Oh, three. So you try to grab onto this rope, and you try to pull yourself. But as you try to pull yourself, your muscles tense, and you sink. Another four oh, inches in. Dear. Currently, half your body is was she in, this? in my. I thought she's in my she's arms. Your arms, but ha- she's sinking even with with your arms. Her weight. She, she's somehow very heavy right now. You never. She's a stout gnome. Like you never noticed. A stout so, gnome. A strong gnome. She bench presses at the uh, you know. benches in the park. And so uh, <laughs> the gnome why? <laughs> yeah. So she slides a little bit further in, and you're just um, like, oh no, oh no, and Rowan, you don't know what to do, and poor Mr. Hopkins is just he's just jumping on you and squeaking. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I guess I'll. So, do I get to do something? I'm gonna say that was just your bonus action to try to lift yourself okay. up. So, do you have a, an action you'd like to try? I mean, fuck. I guess I better cast water breathing on myself. Okay. In, that, in case. It's not water. It's. I mean, does it uh, under underwater? I don't know. Well, well, you could find out. <laughs> well, soon. that's a big Things spell. Well. Oh. That's a big spell. Um, I mean, if you want to try, just out of 
pure, pure panic of Rowan. You're just Can like, you just read the move movement on yourself? I already used it. Damn it. I can't use it again. Uh, Climb me? All right. Okay. Okay. I'd like to... Hmm. No. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah, I guess I just cast water breathing. Water breathing. All right. Who knows? Maybe sometime in the next 24 hours it'll come in handy. You know? Oh, because it does last for quite some time. So you take a moment as you still kind of have your hands at the ready. I'm you just going to it... cast on everyone because I can. Oh, anyone ten. within uh, view? Uh, anyone within 30 feet. So. Okay. Sounds good. So Moira... Um, uh, Janishka, you all get yeah. this ability suddenly, and you can tell that she casts some sort of spell on you, a familiar one that you guys have had before. And yeah. she just kind of sinks, and she just, like, has to use, like, her hand kind of like this and her mouth kind of, like, as much as she can to try and to Mr. cast Hopkins a spell. As well. Oh, yes, and Mr. Hopkins. <laughs> he's just jumping, but <laughs> yeah. he's, Don't never, worry. <laughs> he's never had this spell before, so I'm going to say he, like, kind of doesn't know how to react to it, and then he, like, mm-hmm. burps. <laughs> <laughs> he's just, like, do not know what that is. Um, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. That's your turn, Rowan. Uh, Lilith, what would you like to do? You see that creature hobbling away a little far. So I would say somewhere between, I would say 70 feet away from you right now. Did I see him give that? Oh, you saw him toss, like, some bag at Rowan, and you were like, but Lala. it's, she's, oh, sorry, uh, at Lala, but she just grabbed it out of there, and she seems to have some sort of object, <laughs> and, and she didn't say anything. How far away from her am I? <laughs> uh, you were currently, uh, I think, I think I said about a little less than 60 feet away. Okay. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and catch up. Okay, so it sounds good. So you just run over to her right beneath you now. Lilith, looking up at you. I'll, I'll come down to her level and be like, I just wanted to steal this. <laughs> then I'll open the bag. All right, sounds good. It takes a moment. You guys are looking, and this creature is just, like, continuing, continuously trying to push further away from you guys every chance it can get. Um, I want to make sure this is the right thing that I wanted. <laughs> yeah, sure. Do you want to open the bag real quick and take a look what's inside? Is something she gave her? Oh, no. <gasps> oh, what? Sparkles. Oh, jewelry. Ooh. Yeah. So you pull out these insane emerald earrings. Do they and this inc- drag her down to the <laughs> ground? If she they are, up. yeah, if you want to show shrink, them off. I mean, them. they're very shiny and large. And, 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 and wow. they look like you don't know how much dragons. these are worth, but they're beautiful. Um, beautiful, beautiful earrings. Uh, you can see them in the light. Ooh. Are they her size or dragon size? Um, the, I would actually say they're the size of her whole body. Her so whole like, body. Yeah, because she's, she's, you're strong. Yeah, but, I but can you're shrink, tiny. I can also shrink things. You can also shrink things. Yeah. So you, the original size, as you had grabbed the bag, was about the size of your body, which shrank as you grabbed it and became your size as you received them. Neat. We're almost grounding for this. I, th- I thought it was a we- Wait, we're not near each other. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so as you inspect these gorgeous Ooh. earrings that you had received, giant emeralds drooped in the bottom, uh, inlaid with sapphire and some sort of onyx, um, the rest of you guys, let's see what's continuing to happen with you and see how this plays out, shall we? So, Janishka, it's your turn in the initiative. Great. So I'm very weak, and I'm my arms are floppy floppy, and I cannot hold her up. Okay, she has water breathe, so do I. Um, I have I have some tools I could use. Okay. Um, trying to see what could help. Um, Anything to help your strength right now, because you, your arms feel very weak. I have rope. Okay. So you want to grab Somewhere your rope off? On here. Yep. Yep. All right. Hunting trap. No, 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 no. Yeah, I have backpack with all this stuff in it. Yes, I have 50 feet of hemp in the rope. Okay. So I'll say that you take your rope out, and you don't understand why she's having so much trouble in this. Like, once you were yes. in it for a second, then you know, can move around. Well, but... I'm a little tipsy, and I felt like it's not good on my muscles. Um, it loosened me up, and then all of a sudden I could move. I don't think I really know it was because of her. No, 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 no. You, you, you just felt like a little tap on your I'm head. Like, oh, okay, this is fine. And I get out. So I'm trying to help her, and I have the rope, and I'm going to uh, tie it around her. Sounds good. I'll say that you use your uh, your full bonus action just to, like get it around her okay. waist as quickly as you can to help the grip. Yes, exactly. And you grab either end of one of the ropes and you pull. So a strength check with advantage. Do I dare? With advantage, though. Strength. Oh, 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 oh. Did we like that one? Okay, we'll try it. No, I didn't do this one yet. 
I don't like the way my arm moves when I shake, so I go like this. You know, dragon's getting old. <gasps> hey, oh! Twan na na not 20, 20. Not 20. But with, with, you know, three. So, so one, two, three. Yeah. Well. I'm so thrilled! <laughs> um, so you take your, you just take everything you can, and with your freedom of movement, you hadn't realized just how strong you were. You almost let your own psyche get to you when you tried to lift Rowan out the last time. Yeah. And you realize, oh, yeah. like, I can move fine You can this. do damage. Yeah. But not being able to. Anyway, go on. <laughs> so you grab both sides of the rope and you pull her up and you lift her up as, like, all of this black goo just, like, it's almost like, a, like yeah, through the waters, like Ariel. And you just pull her out as she's uh, currently fine and not stuck. You are removed from this That's goo. Uh, Rowan, you, uh, not Rowan, sorry. Um, uh, you catch that Rowan has also uh, been removed from this. Thank you. So. You're welcome, darling. It's nothing. I'm really strong. As, so, you're welcome for that. I never have this problem. <laughs> so. As this is happening, I'm going to say that though you cannot see any current things in battle besides that one creature that's hobbling away as quickly as it can, the rest of you guys are able to kind of climb up through the slippery areas very delicately and very slowly to make sure that you do not fall down these slides anymore. But you're able to kind of get over one of the ledges, pull yourself up from this black goo, which you guys all have a sense that might be some sort of uh, organic, naturally made cavernous material that does have something almost along the lines of an oil uh, mixed with some sort of rock. Uh, there's a, a very uh, uh, chemically and a um, stone-like smell to it. It's almost, it almost smells like iron. Uh, but as you're able to walk away from it, uh, you catch... Very clearly, Lala and Lilith staring in the far distance. You guys are trying to catch up with them and see what all the commotion's about, looking over these beautiful earrings. You don't see any of the creatures that supposedly Lala had been following. You're not too certain, but the only one who caught that she was even following anything was you. Lilith. Can I use my divine sense? Sure, and that's 60 feet, correct? Okay, you take a moment. You say a quick prayer to Helm. Nothing pings. What so, fuck will be down here? What the hell did you come down here for? I, I, I thought that guy had a weapon. I saw a shiny thing, and I wanted it. Darling, and we have to talk about priorities. Hey, here's the thing. I didn't know he was going to go through this thing, and we were going to end up here. I thought I was going to go, and I was going to snatch it, and then I was going to come back and meet you all at the Rowan treehouse. You go through the, the fireplace? Yes. Well, you went through the fireplace, so I had to go through the fireplace. Now, how do we get out? <laughs> we can go back to where we showed up, I guess? When we looked behind us, there wasn't a portal or anything. Then I have Which no idea. Which way did the guy go? Or go oh, on? yeah, we could follow him. You have uh-huh. you look around and nobody has any idea where he went. It seems like he's he had disappeared. If you want to roll a quick survival check to try to understand what Is direction. Is the punch's mark still on him? It, it, I think it, it is. is. So you can think then. Okay, oh. and then I should get... Um, You're welcome. I should have advantage on wisdom checks to find him. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, good thing I have advantage because that was not good. Okay, that's much better. Uh, so what... It's a... Is it perception? Survival. We can make that a perception check right Survival? Yeah. Or, I mean, it's the same, so dirty 20. Okay, great. So as you tie, try to understand exactly where this creature went, it does feel like it's going not deeper. It had hopped further down, but it seems like it's moving and scurrying as quickly as it can with a bad leg. Somewhere in the like northeastern direction from where you're currently standing. Uh, northeast. And then I'm just going to start flying that way. <laughs> oh, you start to fly 2 o'clock? All right. You zip out as you guys just see Lala. No, no, wait. Damn it. <laughs> Make Make way. Light requiters so we can see. My fly speed's only 35 feet. Oh, I don't know. So I'm not going that fast. No. But as quickly as you can, and just avoiding, it's much easier to avoid uh, the cavernous-like mentality of this space. But as you're beginning to walk through this, you do realize that this is just some sort of naturally occurring cave. You don't know where you're located. You don't know if you're even still in water deep. Um, it's a little cold, a little damp, a little dark, but you don't seem to see any creatures as you're starting to follow what you believe to be as the path of this creature. You hop from ledge to ledge, you slide down one or two slides, you hit what appears to be maybe a 10 by 10 circular natural tunnel um, that seems to kind of track upwards somewhere in some sort of direction. From what you can tell from the footprints, because it is a little bit 
more wet here, and you can hear griffins overhead and water deep. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but as you begin to walk in that direction, you think in the distance you still hear a whimper. So after about five to ten minutes of just trying to scout out this creature and follow it through this very dark cave and trying to get up all this black sludge on your bodies and, and Mr. Hopkins just trying not to freak out and just hold on to Rowan being in a very different terrain. And he hops in the pocket. You guys, a pokeball for you. <laughs> um, you guys begin to make your way up. About 10 minutes in, you do think on the cusp of your vision, somewhere as you're leading upward, you see that creature still like slowly trying to pull itself out. Can I divine sense gift? Yes. You cast divine sense and that should pick up on celestial. It is celestial fiend or undead. And I, yeah. Yeah, you pick up uh, as this creature is now right around 60 feet away from you and you take a moment, you hold Lala back, you pray. That's a fiend. Definitely. Whatever that creature is. A fiend? Not a friend. Ah. Uh, okay. A foe. Um, that was a friend. I, are we all together? Yes, you guys are all walking on. Can I do something? Okay. Um, do you say that it's a fiend? Do you say it out loud, Moira? Well, um, am I able to... Hang on, I'm going to try and find a, something that I can throw at it to heal it a little bit. Sure. It's um, her prerogative, whatever she ends up yeah, sharing. If my I will in a, in a, in a second. It all has to be... Can I, can I stop and shout? Um, can, can you come here? We're, we're not going to hurt you. Oh, we want to help you. I feel bad. I'm I'm a paladin, and if you will it allow me, I, I don't know that. No, she does not. Yeah. She did not. Do I'll that. I'll, everything she's saying, I'm just gonna shout in yes. Elvish. Okay, so the it translator. takes a moment as you're beginning to shout, and you don't know why Lala's shouting as well over you, but then you realize she's shouting in Elvish. And I, I'm I'm a paladin, and I would like to heal you a little bit if you would allow it. Um, you hear a voice in your head, oh. and you don't know what the voices, but it sounds like some sort of demented dialogue. Do you speak Elvish? Common and Sylvan. Yeah, it's not, it's trying to communicate with you in some way, but you do not know what this language is, and it sounds alarming, and it just spoke into your head. Can I try and repeat it to her? Do I get the gist of, the, like, that's why it was, like, I don't think thing? you understand this language or, or are able to repeat it in any way, but you suddenly understand that it's telepathically communicating with you. Okay. Uh, it's trying to talk to me, and I don't understand the... the language and I don't I don't know what to say can you talk to it I don't yeah and see what it am says. I close by you are yes I'm gonna shout I speak demonic it doesn't seem to be talking to it oh. you though it's it's all mentally communicating I'm gonna now. shout in Elvish. Elvish you can talk into oh. my head <laughs> okay so you hear something suddenly in your head as it's like what is your friend trying to talk to me about I don't understand we want we want to help hey Go, you got what you wanted, leave But, yeah, but I want to fix, I want, we want to fix your leg. Tell I don't him. want your help. Tell him I'm a paladin. My boss she's, is going to show me. She's Tell a him paladin. I can, I can heal you. <sighs> she can heal you. What? Pa pa she can heal you. I won't hurt him. <clears throat> we, pro we promise not to hurt you. The sword is just for light. It Did kind of almost, like, creepily claws its hands, and right now you see its hands. It's got long fingers, clawed like fingers, um, incredibly long fingers. And you understand that this creature is definitely not uh, a human. As it kind of looks at you, you see yellow beady eyes. It's did I get an alignment and all from it? Um, does divine sense no, allow does. you to oh, receive do alignment? Have, Certain spells uh, do allow you. I do. I have that somewhere in here. I can do a detect alignment. Where is it? I, I saw, I, ha I had it. I can do a detect alignment. I know I can. I had it here for a second. No, that's evil and good. I know I have a detect alignment. No, I do. I have it. I just saw it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where anything is. Is it in my, my pile? It's not in my pile. That's so not true. Hang so. on. Let me check. Is, is it? I see it too, right? Yeah, is you're feet away from it. Something, or it was, it was just dark. trying to call up this tunnel. There is a bit of a slope, so you guys had to kind okay. of, you guys are kind of using your thigh muscles right so now. So while she's I, I looking around. that up, okay. I would like to move a, a, just a little bit closer, and uh, as far as 20 feet will go, Okay. I would like to cast Fairy Fire. Okay. To light up any objects or creatures 
creatures have to make a deck save mm-hmm. that are in this dark space. Okay, sounds good. Just for precautionary measures, yeah, you just take to a make moment. sure there's no one else around. Okay, and... as you cast fairy fire uh, on it, it doesn't. The creature doesn't seem to be in a, a position where it wants to fight you guys, seeing that it's highly outnumbered by several of you. So it just willingly accepts the fairy fire. It's not illuminated in this kind of faint purple light glow. The cloak all around it, very clearly seen. However, even as as you cast that. Expecting any sort of creature or any other thing to pop up does not, thankfully. But you do okay. very clearly see this creature now in the outline of its cloak. Um, also, because of the way the fairy fire fell, it does hit its hands. And its hands have this um, very long nails. Almost like the hands themselves are just nails. Um, it's pretty grotesque. And you just see these like yellowy eyes staring back at you. I think I was crazy, uh, and I didn't see a detect alignment spell. I'm okay. just losing my mind. But I'm going to just slowly inch towards it. I feel bad that we injured it. It wasn't really doing anything. So you're going to approach it? Very slowly. Okay. I'm going to be kind of right alongside her. Okay, so right behind her, you begin just, like, to approach hands it. Up, like, I'm not... <laughs> okay. So very slowly, it kind of makes its way towards you, trying to pull itself with its clawed hands as well. It looks up, it's in pain as its hand like unfolds with its nails and the palms open. And you now see something a little, and you have her quieter, right? Yeah. So this creature is wearing a black cloak, disguising most of its body. You can see that the footprints it's creating are humanoid in shape. Even if this thing is not humanoid, it's wearing boots. So it's trying to disguise itself as human. It's wearing some sort of mask over its face and it only has those yellow eyes. But the most distinguishing thing about it that you see is that this hand, though abnormal, the palm of the hand looks like a human palm. The nails are not humanoid, but the palm looks human-like. I'm gonna take its hand gently and stop to cure wounds and and ask, what is your name? I have no name. I think I'm Quell. 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 Well. My name is Moira. I'm gonna heal you Moira. a little bit. Is it okay? Okay. Uh, only what is it? Seven. Seven. Okay. You heal it up for seven. Um, it does seem to be in slightly better shape. It 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 wasn't. It's it's interesting. This creature. Though it seems like it's falling to pieces in certain areas because of damage or whatever this creature is, mm-hmm. um, the problem is is its leg. Its leg is likely broken, which is going to be a much longer heal. But as you surge the cure wounds into the creature, it willingly accepts it and does seem to heal up a bit. Um, it kind of nods as it pulls its cloak closer. It says, thank you. Goodbye. And oh, it just starts wait, to stick to you. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. uh, we, we, Quell? Um, we... <sighs> We need to find a way out of here. He just points up in that direction. In the direction you're going? Okay. Do you mind if I ask? You said that your your, your boss would hurt you. Who is, who is your... He cannot speak with you. I just remembered. Through so her. everything that you're relaying is Translate. through translating. Okay. He's shouting Elvish in common. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. So you guys are all catching this. Like, there's some sort of dialogue in Elvish or common that's happening. Um, ordering a brew first. <laughs> Do you guys oh, speak like this? No. No? No Elvish? I don't. So it sounds like a bunch of jargon just happening between Lala, it's Moira, and this creature, and the creature has not opened its mouth at all. <laughs> it is very confusing. Oh, so is it talking to me in my head? Yeah. <laughs> the whole time? Yeah, so, so then I'm just shouting common at I'm just, yeah. <laughs> yep. Telling com- is just saying things to Moira in common. Yep. Like crazy. It's yep. Great. Every once in a while, I'm going to stop and, and fill everybody else in. Yes. All right, sounds good. But the creature, every time it gets an opportunity, just turns back around wait, and tries wait. to crawl out. Like, it just wants to be left alone Quell, so badly. Quell, one more question. I know. I, I'm sorry. Um, who, who is, who is your, your boss or your master? Who, who is it? You got what you wanted. You don't need any more information. It and it just starts to crawl out. We don't need any more information. Okay. And I kind of agree. Listen, I, I, I get in this way of this quail because I'm ha- I've had it. Yeah, um, you're, you've had it with this creature and slowly I've claws, away. So I use them and I get in the way of hold on, buddy. I'm gonna um, <laughs> use zone of truth. It's okay. On him. Um, zone of truth. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Fifteen foot. Yeah. 
Um, ten minutes. Charisma saving throw. All right, and what's the save? Fourteen. Uh, natural twenty. Ooh. So you take a moment. Never mind. You cast <laughs> Zone of Truth, and that creature like looks back at you like angry, angry. Don't provoke and him. Uh, he wants to fight you. You fight with us. just let him go. You see him, and he kind of like makes some sort of like <sighs> like no no voice no dialogue just a snap in your direction. Um, gauges the scenario. And then just turns back around and tries to climb out. No, he cannot. Yeah, just, just let him go. But we still need to go in this direction to get out. So yes. Right, let's just get so, in some space. Can you ask him if we can follow him out? Well, I mean, we're going the same direction, so we have but to. Like, maybe he is so going he... incredibly slow. Because of his leg situation. He's moving about half the rate of I'm you guys. Just, can I gonna... pick him up? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to try? Would you like to try? I was he he might to Mishka. I was gonna ask oh, permission. Nice. Ask permission first. Do you want? Do you want help out? You make that same snappy noise in your direction. Turns back around and just. I said no. Like a okay, Gwen. You we told me his name. Wait here for a minute. I'm saying we just try and go ahead. I around think we do because we're also like like going to do. Fifteen feet behind him. He's, he's very so slow. Going really he's slow. he's very slow. I think that we should leg. just like. Passing. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll just fly up. I'll fly up. It's, I'm gonna it's follow. Like his boss. I'd like to know who his Maybe boss. we let uh, our little friend fly ahead of us and tell us what's up. Can you pass without race somebody? I can just fly up. Yeah. I'm just flying. But like, so you're just in case it's dangerous that way no one can detect you. I was kicking his butt pretty hard back there. Well, you don't know who else is in here. Listen, little cocky no, pixie. <laughs> I don't want you to get hurt. Someone could pass without race on you. Oh, use no, I, that. I already cast it today. I can't yeah, use it again. Well, I'm just going to start climbing up. I'm so I can't wait for this guy. I know. And this what? is how you get killed all the time, Moira. <laughs> what ends up happening is that Moira, you guys trying to figure out what this creature is or wants, <laughs> clearly wants to not give you time today. It's pretty frustrated with how the events of the cave went down. It seems like whatever deal it was trying to make, whatever sort of transaction was thwarted by you guys, since you had given it the object that it was attempting to retrieve. So you guys just continue to walk, and you walk for quite some time. An hour passes, two hours. You feel like you backtrack in one tunnel. But this is all just some sort of underground network, some sort of underground cave. Can you still see him? Multiple? Oh no, you he is going so low. Like it he's would be behind us. You guys if you like he's far behind you guys. Like you you're trying. like I could wait here, but he's also not reacting to me. So he seemed to be pretty unless you wanted to pick him up and carry you guys along with uh, with him, it doesn't seem like he's willingly going to want to work with you in some capacity. I'll even say that he was defiant enough that he just sat there and crossed his arms while he waited for you guys to Oh shit. Yep. Yeah. Um so Quell the smell. As was this happening, can I have you guys all roll uh, rather a survival or a uh, perception check to try to see if you can find your way out of this network of tunnels? They're the same thing. What is this for? A survival or what? A survival or a perception check. And just oh, let me know which one you chose. 20. And was that for a perception? Perception, great. 13. 13? 8 survival. Mine's 13 for either. 13? 9 either. Yeah, okay. Most of you guys are a little confused. You're going in one direction over the other. But Rowan, um, you have a very keen sense of how these tunnels might work. And also your squirrel friend, Mr. Hopkins, is just giving you really great perception here too. He's like, he's helping you guide. He's on your shoulder and he's like pointing and like, like we've already gone in that direction. And you have like this nice little dialogue. Um, (laughs) It takes the better part of maybe two and a half to three hours for you guys to get through this whole network of tunnels. But suddenly you hear on the cusp uh, 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 somewhere in the distance you hear what you swear is water wait stop I hear water oh. what direction you point <laughs> I point to, to where it is in the general direction of that water and you guys continue to quietly go along the way do you want to be stealthy do you wish to just walk through I'd like to be a little stealthy okay just a group self check then for yes. anybody who cares to be stealthy right now I, like, I mean, it's all expected. 
Ten. Nine, not twenty. Dirty twenty. Fifteen. Okay, very quietly. I don't like this guy. You guys oh, are. Oh, but do we plus ten? Um, I, I don't believe it only did. lasts one hour in Fairly yeah. Certain. So, unfortunately, no. But you still feel pretty quiet, all things considered. You don't know what this underground tunnel, uh, this network of tunnels is like. And at certain points, you guys were able to gauge that they're naturally occurring. But at times, they seem to be dug out or caved out. It's hard to tell, but you're, you're, you're somewhere underground, and you're just hoping to get out. The sound of water is promising. So you guys continue up along that path. And as you come to some sort of exit, it's hard to see where you are, but your eyes adjust. You see a faint light source in the distance as you catch the sound of water. As you take a step closer and closer, a smell hits your nose, something like seawater. And you think you might be somewhere near a large body of ocean. And if you're still in water deep, this might be the sword course waters. So you begin to make your way out. This tunnel's still about 10 by 10, though this area seems to be a little less naturally made. This seems to be carved or created with some intent. You're able to make your way out and you see the moon now hitting on the cusp of, uh, at this point, it's almost four in the morning, I believe. You guys were doing a lot of this tracking late at night towards midnight. I wonder, Mr. Hopkins has been so active. <laughs> <laughs> and you see be- beyond you, as you're finally able to actually look out into the waters, um, that crescent moon, almost the exact sigil of water deep in itself, this beautiful crescent moon that oversees the edge of the water. Um, you poke your heads out. See, beneath you, though, the solid 40-foot drop. But you do catch that there seems to be some sort of very rotten network of wood planks that creates a natural bridge to somewhere beneath you. You don't know where. Of course, they are rotten. Wait, Rowan, remember when we were in Cholt? Um, I was thinking that. Um, all right. One moment. I, yeah, yeah. I would like to cast Entangle down the face of the cliff. Okay. So we can all climb down. Ooh. Sounds good. So to avoid this very dangerous, I love magical rotten, friends. kind of <laughs> ramshackly bridges made, you able to <laughs> look down, cast and tangle as far down as you possibly can, and you guys are able to actually make your way down these vines and these newly cast and beautiful vines that are against the seaside cliff uh, <laughs> in the middle of the night in Waterdeep. Um, so as the moon reflects off you guys and you're able to climb down, just a quick strength or dex check as you guys are making your way down. I'm also quite a sober. long. I'm yes, sober. you are stone cold sober. Shit, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Is it strength, strength or, yes. or a what check? <laughs> or dex check? Dex check. Okay. Strength is uh, eight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't this know, is this like this. Five? No, this is okay. strength. Any anything on that side? Dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. I'm flying. You're flying. Strength. Or Dex. Two Dex. Yeah. Well, five. Yeah. Five. Five? All right. So, as you guys are trying to climb down this, the only person who's able to hold on tightly, besides Lala, who's flying, is Moira. And you're climbing down this, be- and there's like a solid like 10 to 20 feet, and you're just like, oh, isn't it so lo-? And right as you say that, all of your girls just <laughs> fall off the side. <laughs> you guys all take a moment. You hit the water. I can breathe. We can all breathe. Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. It's oh, no. the water. You, no, it was just oh, no. us. It was just That's us. Right. She cast it on you guys. Can I try and grab but one? But I can swim. As they're falling by, can I try and grab one? You, you can go. try to be sure. Make a deck saving throw to see who would you like to try can to I grab. Do that too? Save no, because you're falling, girl. But I can breathe and I'm just big. I'm, I'm going to try and grab okay. one. Okay. Uh, oh, she's the most vulnerable. Oh, she's nasty. It's a five. Yeah, so you like, I'm gonna say that you go to try to grab Lilith, but you also yourself accidentally let go of it cool. um, as you start to fall back. So, Lala, you're just looking down as all of your friends are falling into the water. <laughs> Did Rowan fall too? <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> Everyone fell. So, as this is happening, oh, you guys are all kind of swimming and bobbling in this water. <laughs> on your head. You look over it because you swear you hear some sort of 
As you guys take a moment and you see that a lighthouse right now, not too far away, is having its light go off. You start to hear the, the tugging of some sort of horns. As you guys look around and realize that you have fallen right into one of the under docks of water deep. What There's commotion abound. Okay. There are tons of people dealing. Now, it's the middle of the night, but this is right when all of the trade starts to begin and when people are setting sails and the tides are certain lengths. So it's pretty Ooh. busy, all things considered. And you actually see a familiar ship and somebody looking over and waving at you all in the water. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, Fauna. How'd you guys end up in the water? <laughs> My little <laughs> we, we fell. They fell. Fauna, do you have something that could help us out with the water? I, yeah, I, I have some things I could do. Do you want me to just throw you guys some rope? A rope? Yes. Yes. Rats. yes. She's not doing too great with the whole climbing thing. Yeah. No. Uh, She'll okay. have us make a dex check. Uh, wide. Uh, guy wide. Can you guys help me get the girls? Oh, She's oh fins, fins, yes. Oh, half old Cappy. And he just like walks <laughs> down and he like waves to you guys, the bald headed one, snaggle tooth wine. Who's just, you know, the big, it was kind of the uh, oh. purplish green skin, just smiling down at you, oh. spotted. And then you see Gylon, who is now six months older, so he's like 22, 23. Oh, um, his hair is sea coiffed, as I like to call it. Um, oh, and he, uh, and he uh, with his, his fine nose and his, 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 his scout like demeanor, looks over from the bird's nest and just is kind of smiling down at you guys and waves as well. Do you guys like what I did with the boat? So, the boat, if you want to describe what you've done to it. I named it Farron's Boat, and I painted with my own two hands the entire boat to make it look so beautiful. It looks and lovely. It's thank amazing. you. Do you so see, lovely. I drew each and every one of you. It looks lovely. I'd love oh to see the gosh. inside. I come in, come in. Each one of I your think faces you got my nose hard. a little... It's a little... It's abstract. It's, oh, it's, <laughs> it's very fun. It's Moira very just abstract. starts to cry. You don't know anything about art, Lilith. It's You're beautiful. right. I don't. It's beautiful. Remind me not to eat you later. I'm very proud hungry. of you. Do you cry, miss? I miss you, Lilith. I've been in such a depression. I know. Wait, are we still treading water? Yeah, you guys are treading water yeah, in one bite. I'd up. love to see what you've done on the inside. I'd love to see what the bathroom quarters look like. You will especially love it, Rowan, because it's inspired by springtime flowers. Oh, help me see it as soon as I can. I'm just going to fly up. So, one by one, dripping wet. You guys make your way up the side of this newly painted, freshly coated, glossy exterior of this boat. Um, what color is like a gold, like Lysander gold kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. there's gold, there's sunbeams, there's flowers. It's very colorful because so I thought I like color. So it's like a like a 13, 14 year old bedroom dream. Yeah, like like Lisa Frank. I was <laughs> <laughs> just gonna run up and grab you and hug you. It's I wait. It took convincing, but Riley couldn't talk, and wide likes everything I do. How wide? I do, yeah. Wait, you remember when the boat was called Dame Edna? <laughs> I like the new name now more. We won't tell Edna. <laughs> we won't. Edna's fine. She'll, she doesn't care. No, this is way Where better. Where is Edna, by the way? <laughs> She's been working at a bookstore. She store. wants to look up. So, Farron has actually brought the boat over. It took Fana. her three months. Uh, sorry, I keep saying the wrong name. Sorry, guys. Fauna. I'm looking in the direction. Same one. <laughs> Fauna has brought back the boat after three months of travel from Silgant, which was a very, very difficult and long and arduous, arduous journey because there's no connecting river bed or a very clear ocean that connects the two. So you guys got to get very inventive about how you're going to get to water. But after those three months, uh, she has been overseeing the ship. And she told you guys very clearly after she arrived with everybody on the boat not to come to the boat in the docks at any point because she had a surprise for you guys. <laughs> so you have seen her here or there. She's walked through different areas of water. Do you want to tell us quickly what you've been doing, actually? I spent a lot of time in the Temple of Lathander mm -hmm. after my recent spiritual experiences. Uh, I've been praying for Janishka. And try, but sometimes she goes places I'm not allowed in. A lot of times. A lot of times. Uh, 
Uh, but I've tried to be there for her. And I've also tried to figure out with Moira. Because I don't want to kill her. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I so, forgot about we could trust her. So <laughs> the temple to Lathander that you actually have found is a very popular <sighs> temple to Lathander. There's tons of people who go to it. Um, it's in the Castle Ward. Uh, at the northern spur of Mount Waterdeep. It's called the Spires of the Morning. And it is pretty much a temple just with spires in itself. Now, it's one of the actual visual kind of um, points that people come and look at in Waterdeep. Like, if people want to see a very beautiful structural element. Um, this temple is very cool. It's, it's pink marble, and it's three stories. It's a cathedral, essentially, capped with seven spires of copper, gold, and silver that gleam with the reflection of dawn's first light. So right in the morning, it's just like shimmering metallic beauty. Um, so my place. yes, and you know the um, the priestess there who oversees it. Her name is High Radiance uh, Gentilara, but you can just call her Radiance. Um, and she's become a very close friend to you. There's about three hundred people who are there on the regular. It is one of the most popular gods and temples in all of Waterdeep. Have I made any friends that are my age? That's a great question. Um, let's have it be a persuasion check to see if you've been able to find anybody around your age who's praying to let the under. Can I introduce her to Barry? Perhaps. <laughs> Ten. Ten? Okay. From what you can gauge, everybody here is over the age of 30. Um, incredibly... Old, a lot of paladins, there's a lot of clerics. Um, a lot of people at first were very skeptical of having a younger lady come in because they're like, oh, she's just figuring out what God she actually wants to pray to. She's not actually a follower of Lathander. You know, she's going through that teenage phase. But Radiance has been a huge advocate of yours. Um, and so, like, a lot of the people, uh, the occupants of the spire are actually befriending you. However, there's not many your age. But... Do they have children? Yes. <laughs> Some of them have children, so they come in frequent. But you also know that there's a lot of people around your age who are actually at Helms Hall, where Moira is. So you. you you often go there to help the orphans because a couple of them are curious about Lathander, which has created a little bit of an issue because Helms Hall is incredibly small comparatively to the Spires. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, you're working hard on the youth group ministry. Yeah. <laughs> ministry. Youth group. <coughs> yeah. Sometimes I think you have to go through something tragic to really understand the importance of spirituality. I'm starting to understand. I know. Have you thought about the theater? <laughs> uh, I haven't. I'll tell you more about okay. that. Okay. So, WWLD. WWLD. Mm -hmm. I have to just go to the bar. E, uh, 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 e S F S Emotional Support Flying Squirrel. Yes. Yeah. I borrow him. I'm so glad that you've been helpful to me. He's my other little one. Little one. Little one. And as you guys are all pulled up, over on deck and try to get cleaned up by wine who tries to put burlap on you, which doesn't really help soak up the water, but he's trying. Um, Gylon uh, rushes down and smiles and nods to all of you. And uh, does he still have the set? He's he, he's wondering where the setting stone is. You still have it, he has one. So he communicates to you quickly and he, uh, you hear him go, man, Moira's been a while. It's, a, it's good to see you here. Do you like what Fauna's done with the place? Do you like it? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's 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 good. It, it's a very beautiful ship. She did a great job. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> Why is he acting weird? Ah! You, you you okay? Yeah, like it's it's just it's fine. It's just um, I've been hanging out in the bird's nest mostly. It's just nice to see another person. Um, yeah, you know. I'm over Gylon, by the way. Oh, he still <laughs> thinks that you're obsessed with him. By the way, I'm so over him. What happened? He, How did you get over? I realized. <laughs> that he is immature <laughs> and he, I deserve someone who cares about me the way that I care about them. Yes. That's very and I was, good. And I was and maybe someone a decade younger. Yeah. Well, age doesn't matter. 
But yes. here's what when you're 12, it Guyland, does. Guyland's right there, and he's like, I'm hearing all of this. When you're 13, it does. It's like a little walkie-talkie. Because, you know, I was doing everything. I'm working hard to, to save, bring back his tug and bring back my brother. And I'm doing all that. the effort, and he's giving me no effort. And I don't think that that's worth my time. I think I'm worth more than that. Yes. And that is what I've matured to realize. Yeah. Yes. That is something I learned in the bottom of that. Yes. So proud of her. She's done so well. She's growing up. Don't cry, Moira. You're such a big girl. Thank you. I'm getting older. Six months is... It's quite it's, a lot. It's so uh, you hear in your head, like, oh my god, this is such a relief. She hasn't said any of this to my face yet? I had a feeling... Yeah, I had a feeling. She's been avoiding me every time I, like, am near her. Um, so I was just wondering, are you free Tuesday night? <gasps> I have to look at my... Calendar. Pardon me. I think I She's should go available. downstairs. She's I'm going to go look at the other decorations downstairs. Goodbye. I'm going to take a long rest. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, as you guys are on the ship, uh, it rocking back and forth. There is quite a lot of noise, but you're able to sleep here. You walk inside. If you want to tell us a little bit what the interior looks like, too. It's not a huge interior, if you remember. A uh, bathroom, a bedroom, and so a main deck. So, remember, this is where I used to keep my skeleton. So, I we brought... We bubbles? Uh, Shoe. Something like that. Sneaker. 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 So I've drawn strong. an ode to Sneaker. It's a skeleton, but there are flowers growing out of his his oh. uh, rib cage and bones. It's quite beautiful. Very I love of the it. Dead. I know. Oh, that's what I was inspired by. Dia de los muertos. And then, as Sneaker. you can see over here, I've painted a rainbow. Just because rainbows are nice. <laughs> and over here, you can see that... I was inspired by our trip to the underwater. This is my underwater motif wall. <laughs> and it is truly Lisa Frank's dream. And she brings you through the triptych, through the full, like it's like a Chihuly S. Monet experience, 360. And as I gave here. wide this door for his own inspiration. It's not a real door, it's painted, but it's the metaphor. Wow. Very good wine. I love cool. the glitter That's in the bathroom. Good. Thank you. I thought you would appreciate that, really. I certainly do. And I thought Lala, too, because I know you guys both like sparkles. Mm -hmm. That's true. So, <laughs> as you guys walk through the beautifully newly decorated ship called Fauna's... Uh, Farron's. Farron's boat. Named for my brother. That's for your brother, yes. Farron's. Farron's boat. Farron's boat. Okay, I'm going to write that down so I do not forget this. So, wonderful. Um... Very cute. Uh, you actually have wine. Drunishka, come up behind you. And he puts one big half or can on your back. Pats it. I miss him too. Oh, man. You're not ready for this. <laughs> Thank you. It's, um, it's hard. I. Would you like a drink? Oh, yeah. I have one for you. Hi. I... I... I think I'm going to say, never mind. I think I'm going to try to not drink for a second or two. Dranishka, I'm so proud of you. Thank you, honey. Don't die from alcohol, please. What's well, the dragons have very fast metabolisms. No, but you know when you are an alcoholic. Who are you calling an alcoholic? <laughs> not me. Just be careful. Okay. You're like my family. Oh, now I'm going to cry. I don't like feelings. I I think that um, I haven't told any of you this, but I think that I'm going to go away for a little bit. Well, what? I can't out from under, from the bathroom. <laughs> Tameth does the same. I I think that I'm going to go and put. Uh, my love to rest and take some time to sober up before I start drinking again. <laughs> I'm not going, I'm not going to not drink ever again. Okay. Um, but uh, once, you know, I, I will go with you and the next stop, I'm going to um, get off the boat and um, you could give me sending stone or I can just have little Hopkins fly 
you know, I don't know. And then I meet up with you again <laughs> in several weeks. And one kind of pats you a few times in the back and says, I like that idea. Actually, yes. <clears throat> I like, yes. Why well, like? Thanks, why? Yes. Are you safe to go on your own? I'm, I'm very strong when I'm, you know, not in the hot tub. <laughs> and um, I think I need to be by myself. This unless one of the helpers. Oh, I go, I go. Okay, well, and then Gylon's like, <laughs> "How do I pick?" Oh, they look in there. Uh, it seems like the two of them. Are oh, like, um, would love to accompany. Does that mean I take the ship, or they take the ship? Uh, the, uh, they come with me, and we don't. We take a. Do we have a little boat on the side of the ship? You do have a smaller boat, smaller compartment. We might. Uh, I might just while you guys are sailing, take that with with them if you don't mind. I will miss you very much. Where where will you be if we need to send you a message? Um, somewhere called Shmogeria. Shmogeria. <laughs> well, if Gaelon goes with you, he has one of the sending stones. We'll be able to talk constantly, yes. but we're always here for you. Thank you, darlings. It's going to be good for me. Take care of little one. We'll miss you. I'll miss you too. I won't miss you, Gaelon. Hmm. <laughs> Gylon, <laughs> Gylon's eyes do the biggest roll towards Moira, and he's just like, ah. "Well, have, you hear it in your head. We'll have to get that drink another time, I guess." If you're not gone by Tuesday, maybe we'll do it then. <gasps> and so, with that, you guys enter the very small but modest boat. And before the true crack of dawn sets and the sun and the tides are too strong, you begin with the winds pushing away to find an appropriate place to reflect and bury somebody that you loved very dear for you. Very, very dearly. Something that we had talked about, which I will share when I come back. <laughs> and that's going to be our break for now, you guys. Yes! So. Well, so we're sending our dear Helen Yay. off to Shmulgaria. In real life, Bulgaria. <laughs> That's the quickest. That's so good. <laughs> yes, I'm going to do a project in Bulgaria for about five to six weeks. So I will be gone. I'll miss everybody. But I will be tuning in when I can and um, seeing the adventure. And then it'll be really fun to come back and like see what's happened. And I'm sure I'll have an adventure with here. Which one that? Which one's here? Yeah. Here yes, is Gylon. Gylon. Gylon is and here. And then yeah. the other one. What's the other wine. one? Wine. wine. I thought wine was here. I'm confused. I'm drunk. <laughs> I think Not they're me, confused but. as well. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, but we're staying on for the break, right? To yeah, talk. Yeah, Indeed. Yeah, talk to right before cool it's over. So and don't chat with you guys. forget exclamation oh, yeah. mark yeah. raffle. Are we we're doing probably going to pull. Break or are we doing that at the end? Ooh, who knows? It's anyone's game. Oh, I'm gonna try to find out. So, yes, Seth can right. be a winner. I don't like it. Hop on the chat. I know, we're gonna have the chat. Um, okay. If you have some questions for the group, feel free to set up your chat. I've got this going right here. I'm sure oh, we have, you have chat going? I got chat going. And I'm ah. sure we'll have some really, you could still have some really good um, subs so. if they, you know, some people yeah, gonna we'll play with you guys. Yeah, we'll have some come in. We're yeah, back. yeah. So that's cool. We'll be good fun. Your what? Your accent will be Oh my god, Shmulgaria, you have thick accents. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's gonna be there. It's gonna be great. Yeah, I'm very excited. We'll see. Hopefully, and you know what? If I'm back next week, we'll know something went wrong. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, do you guys yeah. want to keep the mics live and yeah. uh, keep it rolling? Because we're going to chat yeah. with the people in chat. We're, we're going to chat with chat. We're going to chat with, with you. Bulgaria, they were awesome. Ah, okay. So 15 cool. minutes of break to we'll be get back out of here at playing five, the game, but we'll chat with left. you guys in the meantime. Oh, yeah, type question in all capital letters before you send in a question so we can see it. Mm -hmm. Bulgaria had terrible food last time I was there. Oh, great. <laughs> Apparently they have something, it's like, um, it honestly looks like the Greek salad that they have in, like, the Cretan salad in Greece. Um, it's a like Cretan salad? Cretan salad from, from Crete. Oh. Not, not like, you're a Cretan. But um, the Cretan salad in Greece is like kind of like a Greek salad, but there's no lettuce, and it's like red onion, tomato, feta. Um, Sounds good. Uh, cucumber. cucumber, olives, Olive. and they have a similar thing in Bulgaria that's like they're they're known for that and something else. Do they put? I'm trying to look. With it or hummus? Not cut. No. No. Okay. 
Lulu I do KH love you. says, That's like we'll miss Kellen. Oh, thank you, and Lulu KH. I'll also give a little shout out to Magical Radiance. Thank you for joining us for your first live GGG. Hey. Yay! Yay. 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 Also, I had a friend tune in who never, oh. I thought would, and she was like, I really like this. And she was commenting on the Forever 21 looking earrings. Oh. She liked them. I love those. Oh, thank you. So those are actual, yeah, those like are real co- that's real costume jewelry. I really like props. Awesome. That was a good yeah. touch. All of a sudden, she brought them out, and I'm like, oh, are so they beautiful, pretty. though? I mean, yeah. they're they're nice. Uh, Okay, I love so the blue ones. Tucker author Are they says, pretty? If you all had to trade characters for a session, who would you Ooh. want to play? Janishka for sure. Oh, Where's thanks. Yay! <laughs> I want to be Lala. I want all that decks and that. Ooh, I'd like to be. So I'd like to be maybe Fauna. Fauna That'd so be fun. Because I'd like to talk like Fauna, <laughs> Fauna, Ivy, Lizzie, Bob. Or Ivy, Lizzie, Bob. And, Ivy, 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 and Ivy, also, she's very magical, and I really want to have magic. I don't get that until, like, level 10. I get it's, magic level. It's funny because people comment like, "Why is her voice like that?" Yeah, <laughs> they think your voice is actually uh, like that. Uh, 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 because uh, that could have been. Okay. Um, what else? Has Fauna made any progress bringing Farron back? Also, we will miss Helen. This is from Akeisha Roberts. Thanks, Hi, Akeisha. Akeisha. Oh, she's she's an active Twitterer. Yeah, so yeah. I, I love that. Thanks. Who I don't know who saw our um, Comic Con game, yeah. Ooh, but oh, yeah. Fauna had a vision of bringing Baron back. So, but they was, she looked about 16. So we have some time. Two years down the road. And I forgot years. what happened with the Moira um, warning. What was yeah. that? We saw me, yeah. or Fauna, killing Moira. But we were, you guys were all like on my side. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't like you were trying to defend Moira. We were oh my, like, I just got guys, chill bombs. Like, if you guys are confused all. about what we're talking about, go watch our live game from uh, Comic-Con. It's really yeah. good. It the lighting's really a little good. off, but listen, like the yeah. listen yeah. and watch. It was a fun, a fun game where we all kind of had visions, and it was it, it was, was different, but it was very emotional. I cried. Yeah, yeah, we all cried. Lots we of all character cried. development. Lots what is? The, are you? Are you going to be hand. special guests on yeah. what? On <laughs> LA by night. Oh, uh, 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 where was this question? Night Razor asks if uh, any of us are going to be special guests on Vampire the Masquerade LA by night. I okay. wish Jason Carl. Jason Carl. Call me. If and you're watching, <laughs> bring us all on. <laughs> all of us at the same time. All yes. at the same time. We're we're back te- from you game. know what? We're just going to take over LA by night. Yeah, we could be a three headed vampire. Yeah. yeah. What are y'all's six headed? What are y'all's favorite parts of um, the watching the show? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Like, what do you guys really like uh, uh, to see? Yeah, send Kellen that answer. And, um, good one. and Lord oh. Arctic. Frost. 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 Lord Arctic Frost, spelt with a P, H, and a Z. Um, would you uh, do another DCA? Oh, God, yes. I love Miranda. Listen, if I do or do not come back, I still love Miranda. I'd love to play her again. But DCA is so much fun. I love those people. I love Chris Perkins. I can't wait. They're all great. It was a lot of fun. I'd love to do it. Yeah. We'll talk. Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. So many things happening. It's so exciting. Uh-huh. I gotta catch up on LA by night. Yeah, uh, the nice. Friday oh, episode. So I heard it was amazing. Ooh, um, and I'm a huge fan of everybody. Says, what Halloween themed video games you all playing? Destiny 2, DPO, etc. I don't think I'm playing anything spooky right now. Yeah, I'm not. I'm playing Odyssey. Odyssey's I'm great. Still playing Breath, Breath of the Wild. Darkest Dungeon for me, but I like Ooh. watching. Oh, you know what? I want to know. Darkest Dungeon. I want to know what y'all are going to, are you guys doing a Halloween app, and what are you going to dress as? Ooh, that's a good Ooh. question. Listen, listen. Um, we well, do. three of us have a really, thank you, have a very exciting Halloween costume that we don't really want to talk but about. But you're going to blur it on this? Maybe. I think we might. We should talk about it. Um, then the three of us should maybe come up with something exciting. We also have the three of us should maybe come up with something exciting. Who aren't included in the cool costume. We are doing a very um, specific theme that we got yeah. way too excited about within the last, like, week. I went a little insane good. and decided okay. to make a corset. Oh, jeez. Yes. I'm so Free impressed, by the way. Good job. Well, anyone her, can do it. She her can makeshift do it. pattern is made out of, was it napkins? Yeah. yeah. I am I, blown away. You psycho? Using napkins? Yeah, yeah, I was using napkins to draft a pattern. Well, Kellen, bring her horns to Schmolkeria. <laughs> what? Sorry. She bring That's her horns. my allergies. <laughs> her yeah. horns to um, Schmolkeria. Yes, If you sure. mean, will Dronishka bring them? They're attached to her. Will I bring them to actual Bulgaria? <laughs> yes. Maybe just because you asked me <laughs> yes. to. And I'm going to take a picture in Bulgaria in my horns and send this. it in. Okay. Because I want to. I'm going to. It's hilarious. Zach Sporin. Yeah, what do you want? 
Have you guys not figured out your Halloween costumes yet? Get me the, I was going to be costumes. something great. Oh, I guess it would be next Sunday. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. what are you going to do? Are you guys, so you three are doing what they're doing? We have, we you guys, you guys we do your trio. We'll discuss, we have to discuss this I want to be in a costume at least. Yeah. I loved what we did last, last year. That was year. real cute. That one was fun. We'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. Last year we were all of the characters from the original D&D cartoons. Yes. Yeah, so check it. If you didn't, haven't seen Ish, that light. episode. Um, if you go to our website, girlsgetsgloryrpg.com, we have all our videos past. You can find, um, I think I put the Comic-Con. You can find the Comic-Con yeah, video okay. to watch on our website. You can find all of our last live stream, including the Halloween episode where we all dressed up like the D&D cartoon characters. I love that so much. I There's know. nothing happier than cool. me in that gif that Mobius made, which is me like with a bald head <laughs> and like my D&D <laughs> shirt going like this and then going like this. Yeah. And I'm like, oh I look God. like an old man. Yeah, who's the so person who used to make all of our like... Mobius. Um, Mobius. 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 I, the man. I would love how many... What do you think? <laughs> I would love some, some the, of those. Those are really are funny. The, the memes yeah. or whatever. Not memes. Gifts. What are gifts? Yes. Gifts. Yeah. Let's get some gifts going, guys. And fan art. Wait, who was the fan art? Oh, oh, yeah. yeah Dominic. Right Let me see. Can um, I show yeah, this on, oh. on? So here's the fan art. So good. That so was, gorgeous. I don't know if you all can see. It's really Zoom small. But is that's the me, the barbarian. Small. That's the paladin. That's Rachel's character, Moira. That's Pixie Ranger, Erica. The dungeon master, Kelly. We got the fighter, Sujata. The bard is um, nice. Allie, and then the druid, Alice, and then the cleric, Fonny Ivy. So those are cute. really great. Thank you for those. Yes, I really love, love this. We love fan art, so. Yeah. Uh, when is so the next great. Boys Plus Glory? We're, we're just talking about that before. And we're working on some cool new people to play. Yes. Mm-hmm. Hopefully I'll be back some, for it. Some more fun Boys of Butts. Because I wasn't here for the last one. Boys of Butts. Um, also, someone said, how are you l- liking the new studio? It's awesome. It's awesome. awesome. We got a great Please, team. Yeah. Of humans Thank you, Van Marketing and Greg Runbers. A lot of you know Melanie. Satine and yes. Rudy, Satine. and they're awesome. helping us produce. And yeah, we, we got, got Andre, Steve Sprinkle. We, we got great people. Great Everyone. People. We, we have two people named really Sprinkle. Great Mary. question oh. in chat if y'all's characters were to contract lycanthropy, which wear form would you want? Lycanthropy? Yeah. 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 Werewolf. Or an animal. Any kind of like a were rat. What would you want to turn into? this. Oh, man. Ooh. I'd want to be a werehorse. A werehorse? That's Lilith. That's that Allie over here. Um, I'd love to just be a regular werehorse. Just a wolf. I, I mean, a werewolf were is pretty... Yeah. Can you be a were... Something, something fast, something agile. Can I fly? I have I'm a dragon yeah. and I can't fly. Yeah, be a were... Do you think that's weird? Because dragon. dragons can fly. So I feel like... In you know maybe that's a new type of dragon we're gonna. Create. I was gonna say a wear mouse because it'd be fun to like turn sneak small through. and sneak through, but oh, also so I think that the but also a little mice are very strong. On mice. They're really good mice. Stomped on and so, like, yeah, wanna, yeah. So, I don't know. I think I have to see what wares they were because I like to fill in the holes. That's why I originally picked a tradition being a big huge dragon barbarian. Wear raven would be really cool. But that's a little dark. I don't think. I don't think Moira would do that. Thank you. I liked when Kelly me. played a, as a spellcaster, don't know which, and brought her spell components. Oh, are we talking about... So I asked what people like. Was liked. it the, the Critical World? The, it was when I was working at the Founders and Legends one where I was playing that really, really uppity girl. I loved it oh so much because she was from, like, the rich neighborhood and she was... Which one was that? Reading, was that was actually... That was a one-off that we did. I got to work with Steve, um, Stephen from Dwarven Forge. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, where yeah, he yeah. rolled it. Uh, and we played all like OG first edition D&D which mind you I had only ever played once before and it was with an old master and friend and I was having them sit next to me the whole time and guide me so this was me like essentially just going in you know freely uh, hoping and winging it and he's so great and so supportive and I, it was so much fun he got all these props that he gave to me that any time I cast a spell, he said, use the prop. So wow. I, I, he, I was like, okay, I cast this spell, and I would grab all these roses I like props. and do it. It's props nice when you great. can add elements in. Yeah. It's just, Those earrings, I would, all of a sudden I look over, and I was like, oh, there's real jewelry. I was playing in a game with our friend Dallas, and I said I wanted to go and look at the message board in town. I think this was in, like, Tribor. And he said, okay, go open that cabinet. And I was like, oh, haha. And he goes, no, no, go open that cabinet. And I went and opened this cabinet in his house. And it had all this, like, paper hanging in it that I got to grab. And I still have it. And it was a wanted sign for this this uh, dwarf that we had to go and catch. But it was so oh, cool. cool. 
I love it. The Meh GM said, I would like to see Todd return and make a guest Todd! experience. Todd! We were talking about Todd. We have to have Todd back. Um, yeah, maybe we can there find was a, way. a question. Yeah. Would you all bring these characters into other games? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. I would play in any other game. It's really yes, good. But depending on who the DM is. Yeah, we do have a lot of men in here. I don't want to, like, um, kill myself. Oh. That's true. <laughs> by doing yeah. some very high level of other games. Two other characters. What so celebrity, yeah. living or dead, would you like to play D&D with? Lin-Manuel Miranda. Because I know he wants to play. One. Does he play? He knows. Okay, so Lin-Manuel Miranda, ready for this, knows that I play D&D because I play D&D with his friend, and she sends him like photos from my table that we built together so he knows and i had leslie odom at my place once so like it would be kind of magical oh, leslie odom jr you mean leslie odom jr if i could get <laughs> lynn manuel miranda to play with me it's on my wish list all right let's all do it together mm. let's play with lynn um, and tom hiddleston i think i would i would play with tilda swinton Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> is she your like Mode, mode for your think, character? I just think she would like really bring a lot of yeah, the white wish. That would be into her. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. She'd be great. I think yeah. you guys are going yeah. back soon, so I'm going to get get out of here. Because yeah. I'm already on a boat, right? I'm, I'm off. speaking, you're sailing off, my lady. I'm on a boat. I have to do Goodbye, a lot before. Jerusco. The reason I'm leaving halfway through is because I was just informed that I'm leaving in two days to go to Bulgaria. So uh, I have a lot to do. Like, pack, pack my horns. No, um, mm-hmm. just a lot of random but if, if for some reason it doesn't work out i'll see you next week but i, I won't but you know. we hope that it's no, we it's hope that on, on a we're gonna all get to watch her movie do you know when it's gonna be released no idea so, you so will, i'll you'll, tell you you'll get more in there might be the three of them so we'll see how it goes Ooh. um i love all of this if someone fainted at leslie Adam jr i just really like reading all these i should i love this um get matt mercer on the show have you uh, seen our um uh, Shroom of Annihilation video um, where, where Matt DM'd for us. Check that out. Also on our website, girlsgetsgloryrpg.com. Yeah. Um, so yeah, girlsgetsgloryrpg.com. You can find it. Um, Who from like the Stream of Annihilation. Elvis came into my head. Let's play D&D with Elvis. I think it might be time, you guys. I think it might be time. Yeah. I think it's do the time. raffle, and then I'll Exclamation leave. mark raffle. We're going to gonna draw. We're going to draw Bloody somebody Bloody from the chat room. Who is it? Who is it? I'll stay right here. Who is it? Figure it out. Someone lucky. They have, have a wonderful time. Yeah, I smile. Um, this is exciting. This is actually awesome. Matt's Mutt's Malori is what they're saying it should be called. I love that. I like that. Can we play with Um, Someone asked, what's the largest D&D group you have been in? Talking about quantity of players here. This one. This is probably the biggest. This is the first and only I've been in, so I would like to play in other groups. The first game I ever DM'd. Like biggest is in size? I play the amount of players. All right, I have one rotating campaign with 16 people. 16! Yeah, it's called Fool's Paradise because it's a paradise. Everyone's getting those raffle Uh, things in. I played in a game that Mike Merles DM'd, and I think it was, there were eight. It's worth Baron Dive. It's worth Baron Dive. You know, it's when all of us are together. Yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, All right. No, eight players what? plus the DM. I, I have a question. We are, we are, like, back. We are back formally and go, also I'm ready to play time. Oh, I, I, I think you might want to get off. But I want to wait for this well, right raffle. after this, though. Because my I question wanna, is, yeah. what about a game where we all played each other's characters? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's all it. X Grave Master X, congratulations. X Grave Master X. Aaron, check. Congratulations. Be sure to whisper D and D. Okay. On Twitch, so you can get. Grave Mistake X. X Grave Mistake. What did I say? Grave Master. Is that what I said? Grave Mistake. Congratulations. I got very excited. You got it. But I know. All right, guys. Have fun with the girls. Bye, Drishka. I'll see you soon. Drishka's off. And congrats to you. Oh, thanks. Oh, I mean, Brad. Oh, yeah. Toss it. Got it. Throw it. Or, no, I didn't mean it. Oh. <laughs> Don't actually throw things, please. As the party <laughs> continues. Don't actually throw things around. All right, so we got another about 25 minutes or so. You guys have an hour, a little less to continue this. Oh, do you need one? Oh, I thought we played till. I thought, no, 5.30. I, hey, guys, lying. Kelly forgot what time it was. Hey. <laughs> 5.30. Thank you for the reminder. Um, so, we have about a little less than an hour then to continue this journey. So, we're going to pick it up right as uh, Dranishka is getting sent off. It is early, early in the morning. You guys are spent, not just uh, through the emotional labor and the crawling through all those tunnels that you guys have had to go through, and also just trying to track Lala and what she's been up to. Um, but 
no doubt that you guys are going to want to have to have a sleep before the true day begins. You're all also probably going to have to sleep in a bit, which is going to set some of you guys off schedule. There's only one person here who's actually feeling pretty spry. And I would say it's Lilith having uh, Lilith. had a very, well, you've had, uh, you've been a night owl. Correct me not. Um, what pretty, time is it? Um, it's currently about 4 a.m. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. So you've been, you know, you usually uh, hit hit the hay a little bit later after night, right? Like you said, you sleep around like 8 or 9 in the morning and then just about till 4 in the afternoon. I'm feeling like I want to, I might want to eat some fish and chips. Um, <laughs> so I think I'm going to go for a little dip dive. Okay, sounds good. Let's see if I can catch anything. All right, let's have you make a quick, uh, let's have it be a nature check as you're trying to grab a fish or two. Ten. Ten? You get one solid sea bass of some sort. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, it's like a pretty nice shape and, uh, you know, you're hungry, so you could eat this whole thing yourself or split it with somebody else if you want, but. Is anyone else awake? I'm I've been asleep ever since Trinishka said goodbye. Yeah, was, I woke up at the crack of dawn. You have been, you are always up at the crack of dawn. That's a Lathander's way. And also the temple gets pretty busy <laughs> right around this time. You are about to head, head over to the temple and do your morning prayers. But you just so happened to hear a bunch of things fall in the water behind you. And lo and behold, it was your friends falling out of the sky. Um, <laughs> still confused a little bit about how that might have happened. But you're feeling spry. The rest of you guys, exhausted. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you all see. Yeah, on you our, uh, fry that open up. fire stove on 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 board on the boat. Uh, as you're cooking and everyone's like falling asleep and you're you're beginning to craft the sea bass, um, you do remember that Tameth, uh, her soul is bonded to this boat. Um, so this like hovering vampire lady, if you remember the the vampire in the right, uh, I do remember the her. second tier of your of your boat, uh-huh. uh, just is kind of like standing next to you and watching you cook the sea bass. She like turns to you and she's like, that's very um, interesting that you have, you have this fish. I have been very overwhelmed and been keeping to myself. It's just, it's not often that somebody else seems relatable to speak with on, um, you know, I look the way I do and you look the way you do and are you trying to say that you identify with the fact that I'm undead? Yes, I I feel like your friends, they don't, um, what's the word? They they find me to be rather Scary. alarming. As she looks at you and her teeth come out and her eyes blow, <laughs> blow out to be red. I can't imagine why. No, me, me either. Now, I don't eat anything, but may I join you for dinner or is it breakfast sure. for you? It's uh, breakfast, sure. Ah. <laughs> Will you play a song for me as well? Or do you have any sage words or poetry of advice, my, my darling? Because I've heard you play before and I am a fan of those with poetry. I write it myself. Mm. Well, then do you want to give me some poetry? I could. Um, it's been some time, but... Uh, yeah, it's down. No. I always feel <laughs> I always feel that my poetry is very um, experimental and heady. I don't know if you'll understand it, but I'll try. Um, I'm not very smart, so it'll probably go right over my head. But try me. Um, she begins to say this beautiful poem about um, immobilization and your body dissolving and this idea of water being acid and acid being water. She talks like in these very weird um, uh, metaphors of space and safety and love and care and how something beautiful can be destructive. And she kind of finishes it and then she just. <laughs> Are you snapping for yourself? Is that well, what we do? I don't, yeah, I've no, never, no, 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 I have no. not been on the land in or, uh, centuries. Howard, do ya? Uh, yeah, I think that's great actually. So the rest, of, so you guys just, you entertain her as you're eating your fish and just like listening to her do slam poetry I'm to just yourself. chewing on a fish bone right now. <laughs> Great. So Take you spend seat. the rest of the morning doing that while the rest of you guys no doubt recover in a safe spot. Like if not in the forest where you have been retreating to or in Yawning Portal or the equivalent of that since you have been kicked out and you would need to find a new bar or tavern to rest in. 
Um, you guys now have a roof over your head and you sleep willingly. Donna, you're like, oh, I just woke up, I'm feeling spry. Um, though you also have, you know, you're a good friend of yours has now been set to sail and is going through a little bit of emotional journey uh, along with some crew members. You make your way in through the winding streets and docks of Waterdeep and you have quite a journey to make. It's going to be a, a long walk. So sometimes you try to catch a ride, the, uh, the caravan to Lathander with this uh, uh, group of paladins who kind of all have horses. Um, as you see them riding by, right on time, right on schedule as the sun's cracking. Excuse me, do any of you happen to have a little room for just a tiny little halfling girl? Whoa! As like this very good looking older paladin man, probably 35, uh, stops his horse. Uh, wearing the shining armor, uh, the very obvious sun crest on his chest. Um, this one, he uh, he's actually wearing a lot of the pink marble texture. He's probably one of the higher ups at the Do uh, I know who he is? Um, you think that you might have seen him before once or twice. Um, you think his name is, uh, if you can remember it correctly, uh, Crypto? But he just stops and he goes, oh, 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 little one. Oh, it's good to see you again and familiar face. Hello, Crypto. Hello. Are you off to the spires this morning to pray? I am. I heard that you have been uh, quite close with the priestess, the high priestess, if I'm not mistaken. Radiance has been taking kindly to you. Yes, Radiance and I are very good friends. Well, no doubt. Me and my wife, you see, and he points over behind him. We've been trying for some time to help you with your youth ministry. If you will come aboard my horse and we can ride off to the spires, you can tell me more about this uh, ministry you wish to make? Well, I just think that Lathander has been wonderful for me, and I feel like Lathander could be wonderful for others. Well, no doubt, my good girl. Come on, little, little telly ho, let's go. Tip top. Aha! <laughs> he just starts to rock off. The I didn't know there. you had a wife. Oh, it's it's quite obvious. Most of us of Lathanders, uh, uh, we we have a multitude of those who pray to him, and it is expected that you are married at a certain age. What at what age should I be married? May I ask you, Crypto? Well, if you are trying to take on the the the, the armor and the and the and the the, the journey of the Lathandrites and. No doubt by the age of 20. 20? Yes. Oh, okay. So I have seven, six years? I do not know your age, I young lady, but I must say you are wise. Have you I are beyond. A birthday? I would say you've had a birthday. I'm 14. Are you asking your birthday? I'm 14 now. And I think that six years offers me enough time to learn how to grow limbs. Oh, do you happen to have that spell? No, I need to get more. I need to learn more. So this has been like an active quest. You've been going to the shrine, to the temple and trying to seek guidance with Lathander. Great. So I would say people are quite familiar with you. So he talks to you about how his expertise has led him and he's, he's not so much in regeneration and growth, but really loves the power of the sun and light. And you guys just like ramble to each other's ears about sun and light and sun and light and dawn and light and Lathander and light for, you know, the 10, 15 minute ride that you have. You get to the front of the spires. It is already shimmering with light. You've kind of probably just hit the dawn. Um, the gold and the, uh, the pink gold and the, the silver gleaming uh, in your eyes as you're walking in. It's a, a beautiful cathedral. My favorite. Um, and it's busy um, in droves, in parties. There's a solid 200 to 300 paladins and clergymen, all and women, getting ready to go in. So you follow along. Uh, this ginormous spire uh, cathedral actually has a very unique interior. It's all uh, it's all spires that all go up. It's not. It doesn't have like a huge main foyer or main area, but the center spire almost acts as a uh, the thing that I'm going to equate this to is interesting. Um, uh, don't cry for me, Argentina. Um, uh, much like the uh, opening area of that the beautiful musical, uh, Vida, um, you see 
the well-known radiance already is beginning to give her sermon. You're probably about a minute or two late. So you just kind of rush in. Everyone's starting to get situated, and you begin your prayers. Um, can I have you roll a religion check to see how well you do this? Six. Six, okay. So you, you were so scared that you missed almost morning prayer session that you forgot which day of the week and which prayer session this is. Now, all of Lathander's prayers are based a lot on the sun movement, uh, a lot on the time of the year and the seasons. So you accidentally start to pray the, um, the summer hymnal, not realizing that it's autumn. And so everyone's like starting to stare at you as you Oh, summer with the sun and the water. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> and so you're like like having to you forgot it because you're so embarrassing he whispers it to you every few sentences you get through the day everyone receives their offerings um gets their blessings uh, radiance comes through and does um a light tap on everyone's head that uh, sends a little shimmer of light into it's a very decorative but it's symbolism of uh the the light god bringing the dawn into into all of us and so she, you usually like to stay behind and have everybody do it so you can be the last person who gets blessed by radiance. Um, and she sees you come and walk forward to the center of the spire and she just touches your head as everyone's starting to have pleasantries and begin their mornings. So as this happens, radiance kind of pulls you in closer and she goes, my darling child, it's so good to see you again. Hello, radiance, Hello. My, my wonderful friend. You know, Fana, I really do believe that you've been so active in your presence here that uh, we might need to give you the light bringers of the Dawn Father's name at some point. Um, would you want a ceremony of that? How old are you, sweetheart? I'm 14. Oh, well, then you are nearly a year past. I had no idea. Would you, would you wish to be blessed in the radiance of Dawn? Yes. Hey, well, that's a very exciting ceremony. You will have to bring all of your friends to be a part of it. I, I hadn't seen a lot of my friends, and I just saw them this oh. morning. Oh, that's great news. Are they all followers of the Thunder as well? As beautiful and bright as you? They are as beautiful and bright, but they don't follow the Thunder. <gasps> and you hear other people in the, like, everyone guess, like a, a solid echo of 10 to 15 people. Um, and she goes, <laughs> and she turns to that's, that's alarming. There's so many people here who are willing to share their light. But that is there a reason why they don't follow him. You are a chosen child of his, sweetie. I know I am. But they all have their own true hearts and where they find peace. And I don't think, you know, Lathander's where I find peace. And if they find peace in Lathander, wonderful. But if they don't find peace in Lathander, I can't force peace upon them. And Moira finds peace uh, with the uh, help. <gasps> and everybody's like <laughs> looking and like, and you hear a couple laughs, like chuckles at the mention of help. And she just kind of goes, <laughs> you have to understand radiance. Yes, yes, sweetie. And that is the light. You know, of I do believe that if you bring your friends along the way, they will have a clearer vision. Then we will never press our religion onto anybody, but it is obvious that those in Waterdeep seek refuge here for a reason. We take care of our own. Yes, we and have... that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I love the community here. And I love that you take care of me and that Lathander takes care of me. In really difficult times, Lathander has come through. Well, you know our policies here. We cannot just willingly have those who pray to other gods come here without accepting Lathander, at least to a, a degree of, of being but respectful. Why? Just simply being blessed by me. That's all that needs to happen. Nothing more. I guess. But don't you think that letting people who don't necessarily believe in Lathander come anyway would be the most loving way to do it and accept everybody well, we no matter who oh, they like we will accept anybody who is going to see radiance but 
but we need people to be respectful of your ceremony. If they are going to come in, we cannot have other people trying to push their religion underneath the house of Lord Andrew. So I assume that those that you bring in, if they are not followers of the Holy Lord, or if they're also followers of some other god, <laughs> and they all laugh, um, then we will respectfully let them come in for the ceremony. Thank you, I appreciate that. And we will not bless them unless you want them to be blessed. Thank you, that will be their decision. That will be. All right, well, we must get that prepared and started then. Quick, everybody, we have a new person to bring Dom to as they all just like get really excited and a couple of them seem a little too nervous that you're like, you're young and like, is this right for her? But everybody is getting, just embracing you, giving you a hug. Um, uh, they do this like little like lean touch to you so like your body starts to glow a little bit in areas. And so it's kind of like a symbol of prayer and, and respect and kindness. So they kind of scare you away after morning prayer and it, you, you get these documents that say that within the next, uh, within the next week or so, uh, whenever you are ready, you can come to be blessed with, along with your friends. <sighs> what a good day. Mm -hmm. So you make your way back through Waterdeep the rest of you guys sleep comfortably. Well, if you you you, you kind of get some seas in, you know, with a little bit of the sea bass bones in your left hand, um, <laughs> having gnawed at them pretty rigorously, and you guys all make it back to the ship. Uh, I would actually say yes. Can I, while I'm in town, I want yes. to find a haberdashery. A haberdashery. Okay. So this would actually be because of the way that you were sleeping and the way that your patterns are right now. It's not a. You probably, if you would like to do anything during the day, you oh, you have the day ahead of you. It's ready. You wouldn't be able to sleep and rise until about three in the afternoon or yeah. so with a, a good solid rest. Um, so do you wish to do anything before you head back to the ship? No, I think I'm kind of excited to see my friends. So I think I want to go back to the ship and see if anyone's awake here. Yeah. Sounds good. You wait patiently as other people are sleeping. Uh, <laughs> you, you paint, you clean up some of the paint, you dust some things off, you put some finishing touches on the littlest nose, I believe it was, that you didn't quite accurately get on the painting, and you all awaken uh, right around three in the afternoon on the ship after a solid rest. Um, Did you all sleep well on Barrett's boat? Mm -hmm. Very well, thank you. What time is it? Three, three in the afternoon. It's an hour or two before we usually, usually get wait. up like two hours, but I guess I'm up. You want to go back to sleep? You can. Now I'm up. Let's say you can nap all you want. Okay. Um. <laughs> so who's good with Arcana? I'm not bad. Do you want to look okay. at these? I. I surely would. All right. Art. Uh. Arcana. Uh, Arcana check, please. Yeah. And also just a general perception check for me. It would be great. Usually pretty good, but right now I'm only at 11. Let me uh, let me take a look. Well, I rolled a 23 for perception. Uh, okay, so as you're handing one of the earrings over to Rowan, who's trying to see if there's any sort of um, signia on it or any sort of enchantment, you yourself are also looking with Rowan and trying to see. 15. Okay, you're you're both looking pretty closely, but you don't see any sort of glimmer or gleam that might denote that this is magical. As you're looking at it. You're not really looking so much at the magical properties as you are looking more for the refinement. How good are these jewels? How clean and crisp are these jewels? How much are they worth? And as you're kind of shimmering it in the light, now that the mm -hmm. actual dawn has broken and it's nearly um, evening once more, you're able to catch that there, somewhere within one of the emerald jewels, there is, when you're looking at it very closely, a name Ooh. in it. What is it? What languages do you speak again? I speak uh, Draconic, Common, Sylvan, Elvish, and Troll. Okay. <laughs> troll. <laughs> it's hard to see through this just from the way, but because of how high your perception check is, you're able to look with your tiny little pixie eyes very closely. And it seems to be written in Elvish, the name. Uh, though it's just a name, so phonetically it should be the same in Common or whatever, but it is written distinctly in Elvish. And you see Laurel Silverhand who you know to be the only open word of Waterdeep. Oh. We should, this, uh, we, we should, we should probably return these. Oh no. What's it say? 
These are Laurel silver hands. We should return these. The Lord okay. of Waterdeep. Yep. It's it's a man or a woman or a, it's a woman. Woman. them or a woman. That's okay. a woman. Laurel. We should return these. I don't feel good having them. Uh, this isn't what I was expecting. Okay. I need to go into town anyway for something. Why don't we? Try and return these tonight. Ash surely would like to get a Pokeball for Mr. Hawthorne's. <laughs> I keep thinking you're just saying Pokeball, like, <laughs> like, fish. like <laughs> fish. So, <laughs> as you guys are making your way through ball. town, trying to get court or face with Laurel is like impossible. She is the Lady Mage of Waterdeep. She is the most well known person of a city of thousands. Um, Seeking court with her, no doubt, if you're putting in a request or something of this caliber, man, it would take months, maybe even a year to see her. Even, can I use my nobility clout? Do I have any? You can certainly try. You've become much closer with people of Castle Ward, um, but you know that without a doubt, if you're trying to get information about how to get closer to her, the place to go is probably Yawning Portal. But perhaps... We shouldn't return them to her because won't she wonder what we were doing with them? Uh, wouldn't she be not inclined to believe us? Our... We can tell her the truth. Or that we found them on the streets of Waterdeep. They might have been stolen. I feel like from that's her. a better way to go. They might have been stolen from her. Perhaps we could just anonymously leave them at her doorstep. What with we a can... written explanation that one uh, of her most we have a stolen. Of rat friend run and drop <gasps> Mr. Hopkins. Stuff. He's not a rat. First of all, <laughs> secondly, he will be not delivering any such errand. Thirdly, I don't know why we want her to even know we had them to begin with. Because what if there's other things missing, and she thinks we only return? Well, why don't you turn into an animal and go drop them? Yes. I suppose in I her. could fly overhead and drop them in her. Yeah. Or we could just be good Jimmy. Samaritans doing a good deed and returning something that we found. There's stolen. no such thing as water We deed. found them. I feel like that's There's risky. I feel like she's going to assume that we stole Good them. deeds are risky, but we should still do them. Perhaps I'm being a little too cautious. Um, or I could just go invisible and try and steal there my you way go. in Is there, and leave Wait, this. wait, no. Well, last time you went invisible, it was it was bad. Is there just someone that we can talk to that is like her secretary or her assistant? Well, or? this is almost like trying to speak to the equivalent of the uh, the mayor of L.A. Yeah. And trying to break down those doors, you're going to have to find a way in. You're going to have to talk your way mm-hmm. through. You don't know where she lives, how she behaves. You don't know how to get into her main spots. Like, she is a entity of a of many, and no doubt if she's ever walking somewhere, she's heavily guarded or disguised or things of this caliber, because a lot of people, no doubt, want her for other reasons, I, too. I have been trying to get on the city council because I'd like to revive Hero's Garden. I've been casting plant growth for the past five months, one more month, and it should ensure that all the foliage there is regenerated, but I'd like to expand the park and I'd like to uh, install more recycle bins. This is turning into a Parks and Rec episode. Because <laughs> I'm good with that. Can I and, Chris um, <laughs> So perhaps mm, in my quest to somehow get on the city council, I could get a meeting with her. Maybe. Do you think she meets with Young up and covers folk. Maybe. So, if she's like the mayor. As you guys are talking on the boat and it's kind of rocking back and forth, um, who's manning the boat? Now? <laughs> right now, it seems the only person who might even be manning it is Tamith, who is not really a good crew member by any Did means. Did we leave the boat? Um, are you we guys are currently, you guys are, are currently still on the boat. You have all woken up on the we're boat. Anchored, right? We're anchored. We're anchored. Yes, you're 100% anchored. <laughs> you do not need to take it to sail unless you wish. Well, we should have some to take care of the boat. We should. I'm afraid <sighs> I mean, we only... I can stay behind. Well, I'm afraid the only... No, we don't want to leave you behind. Okay. If, we, if we're in combat, we're going to need you. Okay. Okay, so... Are some of you staying behind, or are some of you guys going to try to go investigate exactly how to even contact her? What would you guys like to do? There's a lot of different options. I'm wondering options. if maybe there's, like, some town birds we could talk to or something that kind of know the area that might be able to tell us where she lives. 
Or plants. Or plants. Like the plants. Can I run off very quickly and we can just meet maybe at the hero's garden? In a, in Adam like Hopkins what? will be hungry and he only likes the particular acorns. Let's let's see if we can go gather information and come back and meet at the hero's garden in an, an hour, half an hour. Alright, sounds good. So let me know. We're going to say that you guys spend the next couple hours of daylight in your own specific ways trying to track down information exactly about how to find this Laurel Sullivan hand. Um, so, um, what would you like to do, Rowan? I'd like to buy a protective little ball for Mr. Hopkins. Fireproof. <laughs> sounds good. Um, <laughs> the thing that you, the person you know who could best do these sorts of magics would be somebody. Uh, who has caliber of talent of the equate the black staff tower kind of equations, but you also have follows lead and you have Edna. So being the person that you are, you're like, oh, I'm just going to go with them and go see if I can actually speak with them and understand more about the magic properties I need in order to get my, my school friend protected. So you head over to follows lead. Can I go with her? Oh, sounds good. Yeah. So Do you guys and would her. love to see you. She, she'll be tickled to hear what you've done with the ship. So as you do so, you open up the door to this beautiful, small, used bookshop. Um, the scent of old books kind of hits your nose right away, the yellow pages of everything. It's a little mis- mishap. I mean, everything's everywhere, um, misshapen. But but you walk in, you're familiar with it. Follow right away, peeks out from behind one of the large stacks of books, and then his head kind of cranks over to the other side. And I know uh, it's like, oh, oh, it's so good. Uh, hello. Hi. Hi, Is he on so long? I know. He Hi. Busy I know. Well, first I was on the boat for several months to bring yes. it around. Yes, yes, yes. I'm sorry I renamed it for my brother because you're not on it anymore. Oh, oh, it's it's fine. It's fine. I really thought that the name was just too, it was too kind. It was too kind. Anyway, now it's fair and I painted it. But anyway, so yeah, I was there and then I came here and I've been praying and getting more in touch with Lathander. That's but, so great. I mean, well, you have to bring me to the to the temple sometime. I would love I would love to be able to see what you've been doing. Actually, I'm having a very special ceremony, which you should know about. Are you? Yes, they're bringing me to the dawn. Oh. What does that mean? <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, wow. So I would love for you all to be there. Do you come back from the dawn? <laughs> it's a very special ceremony. I, but do you come back from the dawn? <laughs> I have one with the dawn. Mm. Right? Oh, this sounds like a wonderful, wonderful, yeah, wonderful so Lathander. <laughs> well, Lathander, you know, the people, it's one of the largest temples in all of Waterdeep, so no doubt that they have, they were so excited to bring somebody as a, as a chosen one like yourself. After I've seen everything that you've done. <laughs> Thank you. I am yes. quite chosen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Follow. I'd like you to meet my friend Fauna. Oh, what? Oh, hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hello. Actually, you're asking about friends your age. I think you're only a year older than her. Yeah, I'm not too much older. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Is she a human? She is a human. Hi. 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 You know, I... I like your hair. I like your hair. Thanks, it's in a bun. I'm trying to do it the way Edna does it. (laughs) That's cool. Yeah. Do you like to read? Sometimes. Oh. I'm really lonely. You want to be my friend? Okay. Okay. Do you want to read books with me? No. Okay. Okay. We'll work. We'll work on whatever you like to do. Well, I do happen to know yeah. about any. Uh, I'm trying to find someone to protect Mr. Hopkins. Hmm. Uh, portable, fireproof, preferably waterproof as well. But okay. oxygen can still get inside. Hmm. Uh, she she like thinks to herself. She goes. My books are great. And she walks around and she starts to climb up and she's starting to throw books around. And she's just like everywhere. Like she, these books are just going everywhere. So, and it has to dunk and you guys all have to kind of dive and like avoid the onslaught. Uh, however, she gets one big red book out and it seems to have a, some sort of tri- golden trim. She slams it down on the table. All this Ooh. dust gets kicked up. Uh, she slams it open once more, starts to skim. She's tiny, so she's on this little kind of uh, uh, bench and she's trying to read through it. And she points it out. She goes, Yes, um, I think that I have a very special um, protective magics that if I am able to do it, um, it's almost like a modified, um, what is it called? Um, uh, have you ever heard of like a, like a, like a pocket of, 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 of almost like a, a place where you can go and retreat? 
for a day or two. Have you ever heard of this? Like a dell? Yes, um, there's certain spells that can create safe havens for you at night. Have you ever heard of these things? You, you know, perhaps. No. Well, well, I have the ability, no doubt. I, I, I'm not very strong. I'm very young. Um, but with Edna and I, maybe a friend or two, um, we could probably create some sort of um, enchantment on your pocket to protect hmm. your squirrel friend. That sounds very good. Uh, he would technically one time I lost me clothes. Long as you're okay with the <laughs> one time I lost me clothes. I stepped into a magical river and me clothes fell off. So I'm not sure I'd, I, I'd like him to be protected, regardless of what I may or may not be wearing. <laughs> a magical pocket's great, but let's have a backup. Is all I'm saying. I mean, the 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 the, the, the other thing might be harder to do, but I can. Maybe a necklace or something. All right, we'll do a magical pocket for now. I'll work on finding another thing elsewhere. Down the line, I think I can. Down the line. Me. Thank you very yes, much. Yes, it might take a little bit of time for us to make that one. But if you have, um, uh, um, she starts to flip through things and read through this, and she's like reading all the spell components out. She goes, hmm, if you have a thousand gold piece, I could do it. Do you have anything? A thousand gold piece? Afraid not. Anything? What do you need the body for? Well, a lot of spell components. We're going to have to enchant your pocket, and we're going to need to hire out a third person to cast this. So we can create a protective measures for your for your squirrel friend here. He's very cute. Hi. Um, but I think that we're going to need a little bit of resources. All right. Well, I have thirty-two gold pieces. <laughs> um, she kind of coughs and she looks at the the gold band that you have on your arm. That's actually not worth very much. You'd be surprised. May I? No. You can look at it. Do not touch it. Okay, sounds good. She, like, investigates it. She goes, you know, I think this might be worth more than you're saying. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Where did you get this appraise? You know what was given to me? I'm not sure I've ever had a formal appraisal. Hmm. I think it's quite valuable. Hmm. Perhaps it's enough to get us everything we need. Hmm. So, the gold bracelet for Mr. Hawk and safety. Pro- probably. <laughs> uh, it, all it can do anyway is make more gold. But, duh! We're just gonna have it make more gold! Very <laughs> 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 well. Great idea! <laughs> oh, so you're gonna put it on and have it make gold? Well, it can shit a brick per day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm just gonna be uh, now. What I could you very well use your help with? Yeah. First of all, I'd like to do an insight check. Sure. On young follow here. Yeah, sure. Natural twenty. Natural twenty. She rolled a natural twenty too. Can I trust her? She's wondering also if she can trust you. <laughs> the two of you guys are having like a book stare off. Pumpkins, what's your your animal instinct? I can roll insight on her. I'm sure, sure. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, you're you're too a little too short to try to see her in the book. She seems like she's being honest. She definitely seems like she's really excited to try to do the spell. She seems a little too young to know how to do all these things, but. Like she said, she's able to hire out some older people that she might know and pull in some favors. She can get this enchantment down for you. <laughs> but it melts. Gold melts. Oh. <laughs> I can't have that. All right. In the name of good faith, we want to give you a smidgen of benefit of the doubt. Okay. And your first mission to prove your trustworthiness mm-hmm. would be to show me a spell that can effectively protect all knowledge of the gold bracelet and its golden brick stash that we'll be accumulating. It must be well, well hidden. Oh, so you're asking her if, uh, uh, once more, that the... So as this mm-hmm. thing starts shitting bricks, you yeah. might need <laughs> cool. to hide them from people so that they are not detectable. Yeah. So I need her to help me with a spell that can hide lots of bricks. I have a question mm. about the bracelet. Yeah. Does it, do you have to command it to create the gold or does it automatically create it seems the like gold? someone needs to wear it in order for it to produce but if she's been these effects wearing it 
for the last six I'm, months. I'm, I'm saying it's been it. hidden. Yeah. I wouldn't, Rowan wouldn't wear it out. Oh. Okay. But she's seen it because I've worked here with her. You would have seen it. Well, I mean, I know about it. I was just wondering if it had, just say for the past six months, if she's been wearing it at all. I mean, more gold has accumulated. If it's just party funds. I feel it's like if it, it was on um, Lala's arm, that's how mm, it would have yeah. gone down. I think that Rowan's been a little too busy in the forest, not mm. thinking about gold. But right now, <laughs> it dawns on her. Oh, I can create gold. <laughs> so, eagerly, um, I've been so focused on its stone-shaped casting capabilities, because I'm not very greedy. I'm rather anti-materialism as a hermit druid. Um, <laughs> but apparently now, because I can keep me little woodland friend safe, its golden value has gone up. <laughs> so I you... like money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you work with her, and she shows you her protective magics to help you hide the gold so that way people don't know that you're doing this, and it's all secretive. And you guys work together for the better part, I would say, of the rest of the day just to try to get all these resources. I'd like Edna and Fauna here to... Uh, Check the recipe up to make sure it's as strong as Fala was saying. Okay, I'll have you make a quick, um, let's have it just be a perception check as well. And Edna also very skeptically looks over. Eight. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it's been added to the group party fund. So you're looking, and she, she seems to be doing all the things that are right. Edna is correcting her, because she's not always doing it right. She's like, oh, no, 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 uh, follow. No, no, uh, that's the correct, there you go, there you go. So she's clearly helping follow as eager as follow is to do this spell um you are witnessing just why more resources are resources are needed this girl mm -hmm. doesn't really know what she's doing but with edna's help seems like all things are good to go and that you indeed are going to have the correct amount of money needed in order to help your squirrel friend here so how much does one of these bricks weigh? Um, it's a solid brick of gold, which is okay. like, um, I'm going to say, uh, <laughs> easily worth a hundred gold piece per brick. Okay. So that's like a lot. And if you melt it down, it's probably <laughs> would still be gold as well. Okay. So, so I need 10 bricks? You would need 10 bricks. So 10 days? 10 days. That's okay. one week in this world, yeah. Oh, that's one week in one this week world. One week in this world, yeah. And it right. seems like if you're able to produce one per day, then they can use that 100 gold to get what they need and probably within a 10 day or a little more get at least your pocket enchanted enough that he can be protected in 10 days. Okay. So, that's what you guys are doing. I thought you yeah. weren't getting the pocket. Doing the pocket now. For now. For now, in the meantime, while we work on getting the larger one. That might require a little bit more gold and resources, trying to get more uh, transportable one. But at least now you have and a I'm way. I'm going to say anytime Lala has been in need, not greed, but need, Okay. <laughs> but off in the distance, I'm Lala rich. imagines I'm rich. it. <laughs> Lala imagines bricks of gold. Mm -hmm. um, but for you guys, let's talk about how what you guys want to try to do for for the rest of the day. Is you're trying to gather resources oh, and get things ready. Um, I'm gonna try to scout out the um, the area, or the like mayor's house area. Okay, sounds just, good. Just just like get a feel. You know, just fly around. Yeah, and all things considered, you're actually not too familiar with what even the house might be, what the politics are like here, uh, where the justice court is, or anything. It's not really what no, you I'm frequent. I'm just trying to find easy spots to break in so I can give something back instead of taking it. Sounds good. Uh, roll a perception check. All right. Oh. Eleven. <laughs> um, as you're trying to zip around and understand the landscape of the castle ward, it's pretty confusing, and you've just been, like, coexisting here, kind of living and trying to make ends meet, but you've been spending a lot of time as well in the forest, uh, well, the makeshift forest, uh, mm -hmm. the hero's forest with Rowan. So you don't really have an understanding of the landscape here. You you catch a couple things in the town in general. You know of Mount Waterdeep. It's a very famous lo location where a lot of things are built around here. Uh, it's very bricky. There's a lot of cliffs off, off to the side of it, but picturesque view, no doubt why it's the most rich neighborhood in the location of Waterdeep. Um, you pass a thing called New Olam, which seems to be a bardic college. New, New Olam, so O-L-A-M-N. Uh, but you don't find anything of interest there. You don't know why you would go to a bard college. Now, the obvious thing would be the castle of Waterdeep. Mm -hmm. But even as you begin to approach it, it's more of a fortress. Um, and as you're kind of investigating that, though there's a lot of serial, uh, ceremonial announcements that come from this location, you think it's mostly for the city guard. After you kind of gauge that for a while, you're like, oh, I don't think any sort of ruler is here. This is a place where people are training, even just witnessing that and trying to understand it. 
But the thing that stands out to you, though there's several things within that location, would be the palace where the Blackstaff Tower is. As you spend as much time as possible watching this white marble palace from a distance, which is pretty difficult to even get in. There's a lot of people overseeing it. There's um, a lot of city guard, people from different embassies. There's a watch there. You think that perhaps out of all these towers within the palace, one or two of these might be where she resides or works or frequents. Um, but that's about as much as you can gauge with that check. What would the two of you guys like to do as well as investigating locations? I still want to find a haberdashery. Oh, you want to find a haberdashery. Okay, so it takes a little bit of time. Um, make a perception check to see if you can find it. Ooh, it's almost really good. good. That's 11. 11? You don't find a particularly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? robust or like refined haberdashery, but you find somebody selling hats on the street in the open court area, in an open area. Um, you see this big guy with this big floppy hat with a big hat stall, um, and he's shouting out. Does he have hats. like a, a, a captain's hat or something? Um, you don't see a particular, like almost like a like a trinket uh, or something that people would wear to be like, I visited Waterdeep and all I got was a silly captain's hat kind of thing. No, I just oh. want to find it. It's, I wanted to buy it for Fauna because she's done so much for the ship. I wanted to get her a captain's hat. And because we missed her birthday and I feel like shit for that. So I want to get her something nice. So I'll say that you find, though it's not particularly like a captain's hat, you find something that if you like punch it in and then like rip it out a little bit, could work as a captain's hat. If you take off some of the more glossy things on it. Well, she, she, I want to find something that would be fitting for her. So something cute and, and sweet, but also like a captain's hat. It's definitely a good template. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll buy it. Okay. So they ask for just one gold piece for the hat. Very simple. Very plain. Um, and you receive what I, we can call a, a, a half-done captain's hat for Fauna. How about that? Yeah, half done. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I would also like to spend some time trying to find things to put on it, like jewels and silly little things that I think she would like. Okay. And then go to Helm's uh, temple and talk to Kibber. Okay, sounds good. You begin to walk through the market area, getting any sort of cute trinkets or gems that you can, especially in the castle ward where you're more familiar. Mm -hmm. um, people, again, don't give you a second glance. You're what you're no doubt noble, so people won't be as uh, uh, put off by you walking past them. There's sellers, there's people on the market. A lot of this stuff is um, uh, things that would be the equivalent of fake jewels and fake feathers. A lot of this stuff is just being sold plenty. Do you want just to try to get some fun objects and things of that yeah. sort. I'll say you spend the better part of an hour just walking through the markets and doing some, uh, make a quick investigation check to see how good the trains you got and how much they cost. I'm willing to spend a lot of money. Oh. Ooh. Uh, investigation? Yes. 16. 16? Okay, yeah, you spend the better part of the day just making some very smart purchases, uh, but you find the equivalent of a lot of like amethyst and quartz rock, um, things that look like fool's gold, um, and you're able to get a, a I'll say a bag full of um, semi-precious gems and very fun feathers to cap off the captain's kind of feather with. Um, and it costs uh, five gold, I'll say, as you spend the rest of the day just trying to get all of that. But you actually have a solid hoard. Now it's just about you using your, what, is it, what was it called again? You, you're, you're a whittler, if yes. I'm not incorrect. Yep. So putting those whittling skills into Somehow. crafting. Just skill. crafting it together. Yes. All right. Just hot gluing it all together. Yes, the equivalent of water deep hot gluing. I don't know what that is. And what would you like to do, Lil? I think I've just accompanied Moira on Sounds her good. adventure, of finding oh, gifts. And, yes. Can I have you roll a secondary investigation check as well mm -hmm. to see what you might find? Ooh, if you find something better. Natural 20. Oh! Natural 20? Okay, so here, this best. is what happens. Moira is just talking off your ear about how bad she feels that she hasn't been able to get uh, Fauna a birthday gift. So I get a glimpse of what that looks like. 
just you chatting off Lily's love seer the whole day. She's so young and she's so impressionable. And if we forget her birthday this time, what happens next year? Is she just going to think that we're going to forget again and then she's never going to get to make presents? I think that she should be uh, doted upon. She's so sweet and she spent so much time on the boat. Just get her she just, something No, she just shiny. needs to know that we love her and she is important to us. And I can't just she didn't even seem that shiny. angry when but we I showed am. up. She seemed quite pleased she's that we so had returned. And, and so sweet. And then just want to I mean, she painted up. for she painted she us on did. the boat. Yes, so. she did. She painted us on the boat. So why would we spend her birthday doing that? Well, then that means that she's not mad at us and that she cares about us. Well, yes. And I care about her, which is why I want to make her a nice okay, hat. Okay, well, I'll, I'll pitch in on a gift yep. with you. Thank you. Yeah. Will you help me make it? I don't know what to do. Oh, we have to make something. We have to just put it on. I don't know how to... I, I can, I'm can. i good with wood, but I can't put um, the things on the hat. I mean, maybe I can try sewing. I'm not sure. I'm not very good at that. Well, no, I, I'm actually pretty good at embroidery because I'm a noble woman and that's, you know, what we're talking. So as she <laughs> continues to ramble, um, she spends hours like until 6 p.m <laughs> like dinner time you know true dinner time like just freaking out trying to get all of these why don't we go to a stores. store why don't we go i'm trying to go to a store let's, i can't find let's, let's, good ones that one let's go to that one right there let's just go and see what they have a fish shop <laughs> no the one right next door okay okay the vintage so market. after you spent the whole day trying to get all these gems and jewels and get this like half made hat you see a big sign that Lilith just points to that says Gillen's haberdashery okay. <laughs> established Fuck. 97 like BC yes BC. <laughs> you just see this massive sign it's the dawn of time well fuck I'm just gonna shove all the stuff that I've got in, in my sack and go in and try and see if I can find a nice hat so you walk into Gillian's and you just like beautiful hats abound every single hat you could imagine Lilith had been able to find the haberdashery without any any trouble. Fuck. She's gotta love something from in here. Um, this person pops out from behind the counter and like this really like oh, sassy man, not- like very sassy, like coiffed hair, big hat, a uh, big hat double the size of his body. He goes, hello. Hi, how are you? Do you want a hat? We're looking for a hat that would be perfect for a young child of Lathander. You Did would you look great in a hat. What hat do you want? For, for, for a I have a thousand hats. Like do you Moira, like, do, you, do you think, does she even like hats? I don't know. I don't know. I just wanted to get her something. Oh, oh, don't, don't, don't be mean. Look at, look at, she's a cop. Not being mean. Look at, she wants a hat. Do you want a hat? Just you something like no, hat. I, no, gold no, 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 and, no. and pink and Not sweet and cute. My like, name is Gilliam. And he like dances yeah. a little bit on the, on Gilliam. the. Oh. Gilliam. <laughs> something pink and, and golden and, and sweet and cute. Oh, pink and golden. So I know like just cute. the thing. And he like hops off the counter and he pops back up um, and he has the perfect hat. That you had been looking for right there. And he goes, here you go. Oh, no, no, no. Wait. First you have to pay me. I'm Gilliam. Yes, Gilliam. How yes. much is it? Oh, 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 oh. You're really good. The only hat I sure you know, water deep. So, hmm, a hundred gold piece. I can easily part with it. A hundred. A, a whole hundred. That's not worth it. Let's oh, get out of here. Let's go somewhere else. Wee, wee, wee. I know there's wee, a place wee, down. Wee, no, 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 no. There's, there's a much wee. better hat store He, he right hops off. He runs in front of you. He stops you at the door. And he goes, please, 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 please. Don't leave. Don't leave. I'm just, I'm just a ween with you. <laughs> I thought you all wanted hats. See, I was going to mark up the prices, you know, but I, I, I clearly am not going to do that now that you're, <laughs> you're much more fashion forward people than I realized. So how about a 25 gold piece? Sure. He hands it to you. You hand him the money. Yes. And he doesn't let you leave yet. He's just in front of the door. He goes, um, are you sure you don't want any more hats? I mean, I'm Gilliam. I make the best hats in town. Later, now that we know that you're here, we will remember. Hmm. You know what? I'll make you a deal. Okay. I'll give you back 10 gold of yours if you let me embroider my name in the back of this hat so everybody knows to come to Gilliam's. Now, how about on the inside of the hat? But then nobody's going to see it. But she'll wear it inside out. <laughs> Roll a <laughs> deception check. Roll a deception check. All right. Inside out. Or upside down. Eleven. <laughs> he, he's like, I'm calling you on your bluff. 
and I see you. <laughs> well. You, you could use a hat. And he just. Sassy pants. Maybe we won't be back if I need something for our royal wedding. Hey, mm. sassy pants is my brand. Do not let anybody else take that from me. If you want to buy sassy pants, then you go to Gilliam Sassy Pants down the street, not my hat store. Okay. Well, maybe we won't be back. Goodbye, sir. Oh, he just, like, flies, his hair flies in your face and he walks away. It's a lot. How many did you notice? I don't know, I just took a platinum okay. and I'm so, going to deal with it later. You befriend Gilliam at Gilliam's Haberdashery, <laughs> the, the hat store of the world, <laughs> next door to uh, Gilliam's Sassy Pants and his cool yes. enterpristic Gilliam Street. <laughs> Where he has literally every single style of oh, fashionable clothing uh, at his helm. Um, so, as you guys are taking care at Follows Lead, um, and you finally, after probably all night, are able to get the resources ready. Um, Aren't we supposed to be meeting them? Yeah. Yeah, but you guys are supposed to be meeting yes. right, at, right yes. at night at the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the forest. We need our forest that uh, Fawn has been taking care of. At I mean, uh, Hero's Rowan. Garden. Hero's Garden. Oh, so, the water's scary. Mm -hmm. It's a public park outside of the City of Dead, so it's a little bit of a walk from the Castle Ward as you guys are trying to make your way there, all in different capacities. Um, the two of you just dealing with the aftermath of that, you investigating as best as you can the Castle Ward, realizing what time it is, and you guys dealing with follow and that and just trying to get Mr. Hopkins protected ably. I mean, in the meantime, I've been using bark skin on him. I've been casting it every day, and supposedly if I cast it on him for a certain number of months, it becomes part of his permanent beating, but... He doesn't, it still fades, so I haven't cast it long enough. But for good measure, every night, bark skin. And That's it, what it, I did when I had my zombies and my skeleton every night. I and would eventually cast it stuck. Dead. No, they, they're gone now, but yeah. Oh. Hello! Oh, <laughs> I've hidden the hat. Sounds good. It's, it's for her, her, her special day. Oh, do, do come up. Hi. Up my tree. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so you guys walk until we go. Uh, it's a little bit sad. It's a sad park. It's not really taken care of. This is the only park in all of Waterdeep. That but give it a month. <laughs> you'll see it's going to blossom like springtime, even though it's fall. The, the harvest is going to be double on all of these. Oh, just wait till you see the plants <laughs> I have. And I pull open a, uh, a, a curtain. And I've decorated it so much more nicely since the last time. It's so beautiful, <laughs> Rowan. Thank you. I have... There's only three hammocks. I'm so sorry. I can sleep. The, the, I can sleep. On and bedrolls, some of you just have, but you can have my bedroll. But please make yourself at home. And then I ladle some apple cider. No. I turn on the fire with my magnifying glass. Oh, yeah. Do you have any of your acorn bash special? I do, and wouldn't you know, it's from Mr. Hopkins' favorite acorns. He pops out from the bash. He, he had been eating it already. Mr. Oh. Hopkins. A little fur in it now. <laughs> I fit up and here. I, I give them some acorn mash. Yes, and the park looks so much call. better even since Rowan started living here. Um, the trees all had carvings of all of the former adventurers that had come through. So you've been healing up all the trees. You've been trying to take care of the plant life. There's a lot of debris. It's a very dirty park, all things considered. But with a touch of uh, Rowan's love, it's starting to become a much beautifuler park. Beautifuler? Beautifuler <laughs> park. I'm going to say that. I'm going to lie in that bed. So as you guys are getting situated, um, uh, Fauna seems to be glowing, like actually glowing, not just on her cheeks, but like you guys notice there's a couple spots on her body that are actually, that seem to have like small sunbeams on them. You've never seen sure the like dawn this. doesn't swallow you up yet. Not yet. Get oh, this, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> she, she, she has to get brung into the dawn. What, does that what mean? is a that? special ceremony and I would like you all to attend. When? In the next, in the coming enjoy the cider donuts and you begin to eat the acorn mash and just enjoy the coziness of this home and this place to kind of find a refuge in a very loud chaotic city um uh lala uh you hadn't found out tons of information about um uh where the next step might be but you just know that these earrings are very important and special but you do know about the palace so that might be the next step for you oh yes yeah. so um so i went and i looked around town 
and um, I didn't find a way to return the earrings yet, but I think I know where uh, Laurel Silver Hand might be. And that's the palace with uh, the Black Staff Tower. Black Staff Tower, you say? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's my dream to get into Black Staff Tower. You may have to. So we can figure that out. Okay. Because I was also thinking, you know, they have one of the greatest libraries in all the lands. They might know. They might have a book that could tell us how to defeat the Lich Witch Bitch. Oh, that but sounds true. true. That's Two been words. my main motivation. I've been working on this for a little bit, and I thought that's why I'm. I mean, of course, I'm a druid. It's my duty to protect the nature. But that's why I thought I could get on a civic duty to make some inns and and some networkings, you noble circles with that, with the, to, to get into Blackstaff Tower, because really, we just want Valindra to die, don't we? So and we, apparently there's something called a phylactery that she needs. So if we can learn how to undo a phylactery and find it. Or maybe some of her history. It might All help signs us. are pointing to Blackstaff Tower. So, so as you guys are sitting in this very nice place, cozy, warm, Drink it up, cider, eat an acorn mash. You start to hear something on the outside happening. <laughs> like <laughs> loud noises. <laughs> Some sort of siren is going off. And it's echoing other sirens. And you see people, as you pull back the covers, there's all of these sigils, these warnings going off. Um, and you just start to see the city watch and the city guards start to like run through the streets they're they're attending something something big is happening you're catching that in the park in itself there's a lot of city watch running through as well and in the chaos in the storm you can hear some of these guards some of the lieutenants some of the generals shouting out commands that somebody has been robbing the great palace mm-hmm. and will end there oh, shit. What? Tonight. oh god what, oh, what? Damn it. someone's oh. robbing the great palace okay i gotta write that down uh, <laughs> i think we passed part of that Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Remember next week, 6 p.m. Yes. Yes. 6 p.m. Pacific Pacific Standard Time. We will be playing live after TwitchCon. Yes. Yes. And And then we'll be back to our regular time on following Sundays. Yes. Yes. And thank you for watching us tonight. And for joining. Joining us on our next season journey. Super fun. And we got Kim back and the whole crew, even though Junishka will be gone for a bit. So thanks so much for sticking around. Thanks to the whole cast, uh, the crew and the cast. You guys are amazing. And have a great night. See you next time. Bye.